who had hoped to get back to the championship game for the third straight year. But uh, tonight, Purchase Line Red Dragons, they did, they took the route that they uh, took last year, you might say, because they started out slow, they were 0-3, and, and then have bounced back to win four of their past five games. The lone blemish was at Homer Center in that wild 57-48 to shootout. But Purchase Line coming off of a game that saw them not Comets 20 to 14 last week, and they have to be feeling really good about themselves. Yeah, they sure do. That that was a major effort. Uh, their defense had been a question mark, I thought, but uh, they played Penn's Manor as tough as you could. They were down 14 points, never let them score again. That's not easy to do, and they had to play that in Kentwood. So uh, uh, that had to be encouraging for Coach Felicic, Felicic and his team. And uh, offensively, they, they've got everything going right now. They're pretty much a rush team. Uh, they've got to have some success running the ball tonight so that they can get in what passing they like to do. But it's basically off the play action stuff. Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, they're in a familiar position, aren't they, in the semifinals? They're 5-2. and two. However, one of those losses, a forfeit loss in Week 2, when they had defeated Forest Hills, uh, handedly 44 to nothing and then they found a violation internally reported it to District 6 and whatever the violation was I don't think it ever did officially come out it resulted in a forfeit loss to Forest Hills so you might say that they are 6 and 1 uh, they also have a forfeit win on their record the opening round of the playoffs against Bishop McCourt, and that came on the heels of a COVID situation that affected the Guilfoyle program, where they had to uh, sit out a game, and you know there was even concern that they might not be able to participate in the playoffs. And lo and behold, it was Bishop McCourt that opted out. We think out of concern about Bishop Guilfoyle. You got that all straight. Well, it's a weird year, is it not? But uh, they're here, and, and a lot of the credit goes to the staff, certainly to the players. Starting out 0-3 in the team that was expected to challenge for the, the Heritage title and, and turning it around as they did. And they, again, we go back to the Penn's Manor when I think that was their statement for the season and that gets them here and uh, they have an opportunity to do something that's very special. We're going to break this game down on our pregame show. Kickoff scheduled for 7 o'clock. This is Bishop Guilfoyle's home field. This stadium that's been around a long time, we're going to have a great vantage point on the second level of the press box, the game also being video streamed. If you're watching us right now, you already know that. If you didn't know it was being video streamed, you can go to the U92Radio.com website, go to the Features tab, and uh, look for the IRMC High School Sports Night page, and you'll find a direct link to our video stream, or you can simply log on to YouTube.com and look for the U92 uh, radio channel on YouTube or in the search engine, type in purchase line at Bishop Guilfoyle 11 7 20. That's today's date, and you'll find uh, the video stream. And uh, there are various ways to go about finding it. We hope you do. We'll also have a nice interview with purchase line head coach Matt Polisic, who's in his fourth season at the helm, 22 and 22 record. And uh, they've been in these playoffs before, as a matter of fact, Ward, they were in the same spot in the semifinals last year, had to go to Juniata Valley and bowed out 31-21 to against the Hornets. It was a good Juniata Valley team. Uh, Homer played them last year, and uh, they beat Homer pretty handily out there. So that was a, a good effort on part of Purchase Line, and it gets just whets your appetite to get back at it. And they're, they're back here, and they're on this field. You know, if you're a Perch Line fan, you want to come back here next week. How much does that help the players that you know were big 
participants in last year's team. Obviously, you lose key players like uh, Colin Gonchar comes, certainly comes to mind. Uh, the quarterback, who's uh, Barnett, uh, was a standout player. But I would think the players coming back, it makes you a little bit hungry. You've been through it. Hopefully, as Bum Phillips once say, you knock, you know, you knocked on the door one year, you try to kick it down this year. Kick it down. It, they, you know, they, they've got a lot of confidence from that last year. Even though they started 0 and 3, you can see that that had a lot to do with that. The attitude. You could have just cashed it in right there, but they did not. They turned their season around, and they're playing their best football right now, Mark. And I say this in basketball season, and I mean it right now, too, in football. This is when you want to be playing your best, the end of the season when you're in the playoffs, and they are doing that. We're going to come back to our s and Bank broadcast booth, talk a little bit more about tonight's matchup, and then we'll be getting to the head coach, Matt Polisic, interview as well. That is our pregame show, the District 6 Class A Semifinals Purchase Line, and Bishop Guilfoyle from Altoona's Mansion Park. Our coverage will continue after this on the Purchase Line U92 Radio Football Network. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com Oh, jeez, I'm hanging myself here. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Excuse me. Or a snake if we bit me. You heard me. At the beginning of the street. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi. I want to sincerely thank the people of the 62nd Legislative District for your overwhelming re-election support. I am truly honored to serve as your voice in Harrisburg and look forward to continuing the hard work ahead. Serious challenges face our communities and we will address them through effective leadership, communication, compassion and understanding. My staff and I are dedicated to serving you and working in partnership with our local, state and federal leaders to make all of our lives better. I truly appreciate your support. And let's go Vocal Teams. No matter who you are, or where you are, CNB Bank makes it easy to take care of life's necessities, like paying Uncle Rick back for lunch, or depositing that paycheck for dog sitting. And even if you prefer to bank, the more traditional way, we still rock that too. Welcome to CNB Bank. Experience better banking at CNB Bank. If only they had the chimney cleaned. If only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Erie Insurance. They uh, then defeated Forge uh, Four Hills 48 to nothing was that score. The one that I mentioned, then they had to report a violation and it turned into a forfeit loss. Uh, they were 0 and 2 at that point. And with a truncated season, you're wondering, Bishop Guilfoyle, maybe they won't make the playoffs. What if they only take four teams? And if they, there was talk uh, at one time only taking four teams, uh, they end up taking, as you know, 12 and about four too many. But, I agree. Um, so they survived that, and they haven't lost since. They've had wins over Somerset, 45 to 12. Westmont, 39 to nothing. Chestnut Ridge, 31-21. They received that forfeit win over Bishop McCourt that I talked about in our opening segment to start the playoffs. And then last week, boy, it's been a long time since I've been to Connemaw Valley. The uh, field, <laughs> yeah. you need to walk down. The field sits down in the valley there, and that's why it's called Connemaw Valley, it's I suppose. Day football. Also. And Connemaw Valley, first half scared to a degree but uh 
the uh, Marauders eventually rolled 41 to nothing over Connemaw Valley. It was 7 nothing, and the Jays had a first and goal at the three, but Bishop Guilfoyle held them out. They've won six District 6 championships, two in Class 2A in 1985, and in 1987, the 87 victory came over the United Lions, and then four in single A. 2014, 2015, 2016, they had a 59-game winning streak. They were three-time state champions. We did the game in 2017. Candidly, we talked coming over the mountain. It would be nice if Homer Center kept it out of the mercy rule. I'll own up to that. I think you were yeah. on board with me. Right. And Homer Center kind of shocked the world in one of the biggest high school upsets, I think, in the Commonwealth's history. And they won the District 6 championship and went on to the state championship game, losing to Jeanette after defeating Stilton High Spire. But Guilfoyle then, again, last year winning the uh, title. They also have those three state championships. They're hoping to get back this year. Purchase line hoping to uh, prevent that. They're three and one in those state title games. They beat Clareton 19 to 18 in 2014. Farrell in 2015, 35 to nothing. Clareton again uh, in 2016, 17 to nothing. But then in a rematch with Farrell last year, they lost 10 to seven in overtime. They have many of those players back. Keegan Myrick, an outstanding running back, one of them, and uh, a lot of skill, a lot of size. I think most importantly, a lot of depth with a roster of about 56, and I think you counted 51 dress tonight. Yeah, actually, our Chris Graham, our spotter, counted for us, and uh, there were 51 dressed. Uh, you know, in, in the Heritage Conference, that, that's probably two and a half grades of boys dressed, but uh, that, that you got a lot to pick from, and of course, the schedule is accelerated. A lot of bigger schools there than what the Heritage teams play, so Big challenge for Purchase Line. There's no doubt about that. They understand that coming in. Every team that comes over here knows they're going to up against the heavy favorite. And Bishop Guilfoyle was a heavy favorite to, to get to the title game in the state again this year. And that's why their start was kind of surprising. I agree with you. I think the playoff field was a little too big. But uh, that, nevertheless, we're here tonight. This is a game that counts. This is what we're going to have to do. And uh, Perch Lions going to need to uh, play their A game if they want to beat this team. Well, there are exceptions, and Purchase Line, I think, one of them because, uh, you know, they, they I'm, I'm not even sure what seed the Dragons ended up. But uh, fortunately, they did make it, and there's certainly evidence of you get hot at the right time again. And uh, yep. look what's happened here. They are hoping to get past the semifinal round. round. Fourth straight appearance in the District 6 playoffs. They eliminated Blairsville and Portage last year before losing to Juniata Valley, as we've already spoken about. 2018, they lost to United 14-6 in overtime. 2017, they defeated United uh, before being eliminated at Homer Center. And dating back to their first appearance in 1999, or 1990, I should say, purchase lines 13-10 and 10 overall in the District 6 playoffs. Winning the Class 2A title, boy, do I remember that team, in 1990, star running back Brandon Oberdorf, Brandon Oberdorf, former coach at Purchase Line, current head coach at Indiana. He was so exciting to watch. They've appeared in the playoffs uh, many years, including 1990, 96, 01, 04, 06, 7, 8, 17, 18, and 19. So they've been here a lot to their credit. Yeah, it's a good program. It's a solid program, and uh, they got some good athletes. You, you're going to hear about them as the game goes on. We won't cover them right now, but uh, they have a, a team that can make some noise here. The key for them is their defense. They have got to be able to keep Bishop Guilfoyle from running away with this thing. And I would think early on in this football game will be important. Yeah, very much so. You want to have some success, especially offensively, at least moving the ball. You don't necessarily have to score, but you got to feel like, hey, we can move it. And, and that will give you some off, uh, some confidence to propel you into maybe a, a score in the second quarter or so. All right. Coming back, we're going to have Matt Felisic, fourth-year head coach of the Purchase Line Red Dragons, on the other side of this commercial break as we are about 30 minutes away from the kickoff here at Mansion Park in Altoona, the Purchase Line Red Dragons. We're going to root for the hometown team tonight as they go against the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. And you're watching it on our Renda TV video stream, we hope and listening right here on U92Radio.com from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Coming back with, back with Coach Felisic right after this. 
For more than 100 years, the Indiana Regional Medical Center has been your number one health option, always striving to bring you the latest, most innovative medical care, like urgent care, now available in Indiana at MedExpress at 2128 Oakland Avenue. IRMC and MedExpress have formed an exciting new partnership for urgent care services. So when you have a cold or the flu, you've injured yourself and need diagnostic services for a sprain or fracture, your lab work, or have some non-emergency health issue, visit MedExpress, 2128 Oakland Avenue in Indiana been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, and I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who voted for my re-election. I'm honored that you placed your trust in me. And with that trust, I guarantee I will continue to work tirelessly on your behalf to address challenges and move our region and our Commonwealth forward. I have every confidence that our future is bright. And speaking of our future, I salute all of our young student athletes for competing in the district and state playoffs. This is Tessa Bailey from Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas and stock with prices to fit every budget. Weaver's Pools and Spas, Philadelphia Street. Coming is your car ready. The incredible tire sell is on at Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Buy three tires, get the fourth for one dollar. Buy three tires, get the fourth for a buck. Stop in or call Freedom about the most trusted tire brands available. They're all buy three, get the fourth for one dollar. Ask about additional super service specials too. Nobody does tires and service like Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. For more information, call their lucky number at 814-948-7777. No matter who you are or where you are, CNB Bank makes it easy to take care of life's necessities, like paying Uncle Rick back for lunch or depositing that paycheck for dog sitting. And even if you prefer to bank, the more traditional way, we still rock that too. Welcome to CNB Bank. Experience better banking at CNB Bank been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. You want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at Pre-game show from Mansion Park continues as the purchase line Red Dragons get set to meet the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders and head coach Matt Polisic joining us as promised and coach I'll get to do the game tonight looking forward to it congratulations on your two playoff wins and you come off of a very impressive performance upsetting the number one seed Penn's Manor Comets so you must be feeling pretty good you and the team. 
definitely a great week of practice this week. The weather was nice. We get to go to turf again, and you know the kids get to experience Mansion Park. So that's pretty exciting. I was going to say, third week in a row, uh, you'll be playing on turf. Uh, the guys have to like that, particularly this time of year. Yeah, uh, definitely. The um, you know our practice field is not in the best of shape right now. Uh, we've been trying to use the game field a little bit more when we can. Uh, we're trying not to rip that up also, but it's nice to go to turf and know you're playing the game on it. Uh, kids can feel a little faster on it, but uh, definitely it's been an exciting little run here, and we get to go to the turf again, and the kids always like going on turf. Matt, last year you were at this same point. Uh, of course, the calendar a little bit different this year with the truncated season, but semifinal game against Juniata Valley up in Alexandria, Pennsylvania, and you came up 10 points shy. Does that experience help you this time around? Definitely. I think the kids know what to expect. You know, you're one game away from getting to the district championship. And I think, you know, with the kids we lost last year, these kids now have stepped up to, you know, try to fill their shoes. And it's a great experience for them. And, you know, we've had five playoff games in the last three years or something like that. And it's just great for the kids. Anytime they get a playoff game, whether you're ninth or tenth grader or senior, it gives you experience. So last year, these seniors are ready for this year. A little run last year. The last time I saw your team was at Memorial Field in Homer City, and uh, like it always seems to uh, occur against Homer Center, an arena football league game broke out. <laughs> and, uh, I remember your quote from the game. It was an arena game. I remember that. <laughs> um, and your first playoff game was rather high scoring at West Shemokin, but last week flipped the switch. Great defensive effort. How did that happen? Um, I just think it was getting, like I've always said all year, we just got to get guys in the right places, and I think we had that last week. We switched up a couple of things we did on defense in the first time we played them. You know, I just think our defense was inspired to play football, and they jumped off to an early 14 nothing lead, and we battled back, and nobody ever hung their head. They kept working, working, and eventually, before you know it, you know, it was 14-14 at halftime, but the defense just played tremendous, held them to zero rushing yards, limited their passing game other than one big passing play, and other than that, you know, they they were hitting, and if you anybody got to see that game, you got to see how physical we were that game. So yeah, yeah, it's a good feeling. Absolutely, and Melo Sanchez in the secondary probably uh, would tell me that maybe a couple of those should have been interceptions, but he played very, very well for you back there to lead the yeah. secondary. Yeah, he had one pick, and I think that gives him six, and I told him yesterday if he would have caught what he has dropped so far, he'd probably be close to 15 interceptions this year, and I think last week he had five uh, that hit his hands, and I know it was smoke, and there's another five. So he's definitely you know getting to the ball, and it's nice to have him back there playing center field. Before we get to tonight's opponent, I thought last week you also changed some things up offensively. You go from the Wildcat with Josh Seitz, and then, boy, I haven't seen a lot of eye formation on video this year, and that was kind of pleasant to see. So uh, might we see the same tonight with throwing a couple of different things at the Marauders? Yeah, um, that's the plan. And, you know, the biggest thing was, you know, earlier in the year um, was trying to switch out personnel when we jump from one formation to another. And I know, you know that's normally easy, but when you're switching quarterbacks and one guy here or there, you're bringing a tight end in, it causes challenges. And we got that down to Penn's manner. We were jumping back and forth, uh, letting John and Josh both both work at quarterback. Yeah, it was nice to run some eye. Normally when we play Pennsylvania, we always try to run some eye at them and push them off the ball, and we were able to do that last Friday. Well, let's talk about Bishop Guilfoyle. We know their tradition and their history, and uh, they have another strong football team. Break them down for me. I just think it's a pretty solid team. Uh, you know, they switch their defenses up a lot and a ton of athletes and a lot of size and a lot of speed. Um, and the biggest thing that you watch that I've noticed when you watch film is they don't give up too many big plays. Very rarely do they ever lose yards on a play. So, you know, first down, they're all, every down they're gaining positive yards. You don't get to see that very often. Normally a high school football team will have a breakdown here or there. You don't see too much from them, and I think that's just a sign of consistency. They're well coached, and you got 50-some kids to choose from. you got you got a lot of players that you're going to have on the field. Keegan Myrick has impressed me even uh, going back a couple of years, now a senior, uh, certainly a talented running back. Uh, Hayden Gardner, a transfer from – don't you like that word? Transfer from Southern Huntington came in and um, was initially ruled ineligible for the playoffs. Now he's eligible. Uh, eligible. That's a whole other story. But certainly those are two key guys for them. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. And there's a few, uh, you know, they do a few key things, you know, that we're trying to pick up on and, you know, hope it leads to something good here tonight. But uh, a couple of times when they move the guys around there, they give some things away. And when one's in the backfield, he's getting the ball or the other one's a quarterback. So there's a lot of things to pick up on, but, you know, you still got to be able to stop it, and that's what we're going to be challenged for tonight. You know, they got a, uh, like I said, they bring a lot of speed, probably more speed than we've seen this year in the conference, and uh, it's going to definitely be a challenge, but I think we're up for it. Talk about the line play. I know you were physical last week. They have some big guys up front uh, and some depth to go with it. 
how do you feel you match up? I think we'll be fine up front. Um, you know, they are bigger than what we normally see, but I don't think that, you know, size is irrelevant. We've got to get off the ball and drive them. Big challenge for us also is, you know, their line does a lot of zone blocking, so we can't be getting double teamed pushed down the field. We go to for the D line we gotta stay in our stay in our gaps and stay strong and you know, get one yard of penetration and get low and find the football. But I think it's gonna be a challenge both sides, but I think I think they should be fine. Coach, obviously you wanna run the ball and be successful and if you can do that you limit their possessions, right? Yes, and uh the goal is to, you know, keep their offense off the field. So if we have to run the play clock down a little bit, we'll do that. But, you know, we're just going to play football to start and see where it takes us. What do you think are the absolute keys other than the obvious not turning it over? we got to possess the ball and limit the big plays by um, heel foil. I think that's a big thing. We can't give up a one-play drive or a two-play drive. we got to, you know, if they're going to move the ball on us, we got to take some time off the clock. So we can't give up a, a big play. We've got to force our own turnovers on them. Coach, it's always an exciting time of the year. I know you and the guys are revved up for some semifinal action. I'm sure the Purchase Line community will be behind you. We are, too, happy to be here covering the game. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you. It's always, you know, it's exciting to be back here. And, you know, last year we had a nice run with those guys and fell a little short at Juniata, so we get another shot at it this year. And uh, I know the community is excited. We have a little had a send-off today for the kids. So it's, it's definitely an exciting time, and, you know, I'm glad we got to play as many games we have so far, and we're, you know, Working for one more. All right. Good luck, Matt. Thank you. All right. Head coach Matt Polisic of the Purchase Line Red Dragons. We're going to come back to Mansion Park in just a little while and continue with our pregame show. It's the Purchase Line Red Dragons and the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. And you're listening on U92.5 FM, hopefully watching our video stream as well, presented by Renda Digital TV. You can find the link if you're not there already on our U92radio.com website. Go to the Features tab in the IRMC High School Sports Night page and you'll find the video stream for this evening's game. Coming back to Mansion Park after this on the Purchase Line Red Dragon U92 Radio Network. Call Larry Catless, financial advisor of Eagle Strategies, LLC, a registered investment advisor for all of your financial planning needs. Registered representative offering securities through Nylife Securities, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a licensed insurance agency. Office located at 674 Philadelphia Street, Indiana, PA. Eagle Strategies, LLC, and Nylife Securities, LLC are New York Life companies. Call this number. It's never too late. 463-7788. Christy Sweet was diagnosed with breast cancer at just 32 years old. Fortunately, IRMC Cancer Center, in partnership with UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, is just 20 minutes from her home. Today, after a chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and radiation therapy, Christy is cancer-free. Learn more about Christy's story and the world-renowned cancer care right here in Indiana at upmchillman.com forward slash IRMC. along with that we don't know what happened at least I don't I didn't hear anything official but uh, here they are uh, that's much as we need to say about that is Justin Wheeler uh, head coach in his 11th season with a record of 253 and 84 a 751 winning percentage he then was going to have to sit out a game I think it would have been that game because he was so. exposed to to COVID so it's just been a crazy year I know we all look forward to the days when we return to some semblance of normal whatever the new normal is going to be points per game Bishop Guilfoyle averaging 35.7 I'm including the 48 they scored against Forest Hills a game that was subsequently forfeited and purchase line averaging 33 points a game rushing offense Purchase line 296 a game, Guilfoyle 240. Passing, purchase line just 65, Guilfoyle 108. 
Total offense per game, 361 for the Dragons, 348 for Bishop Guilfoyle. Granted, Bishop Guilfoyle plays in a larger, tougher conference, so sometimes numbers can be misleading. I do know this purchase line off of the victory over Penn's Manor. They have to be feeling very good about themselves. You know, they had they started 0-3. They lost to West Shimokin, Penn's Manor, and who was the third Homer, loss against? Homer Center. Homer, Homer Center, that's correct. Um, but then they were able to avenge losses to Penn's Manor and West Shimokin. And I know head coach Greg Page um, really didn't want to match up against the no. line a second time. Not many did, and now we know why. Even in the losses, Mark, they scored a lot of points. They're, they're a real offensive machine when things are clicking, and I think it's critical that they get that ground game going. Uh, obviously, Guilfoyle is going to be a much tougher opponent than they've run into so far. Uh, they're going to have to be able to run the ball tonight, though, to be successful. And I'll be interested to see how that all flushes out as we get into the first quarter here. Again, the winner will play the Homer Center Wildcats. What a role that program has been on. They will make their fourth District 6 championship appearance in eight years, dating back to 2013. Talk about Bishop Guilfoyle's success. Homer Center, really, I think, more impressive because they're doing it as a public school. Uh, in Class A, whereas Guilfoyle, you know, the benefits of being a private school, like so many, and I'm not picking on them, it, it's just the fact that they have, you know, they're operating in a big city of Altoona, and they're drawing players from many, many area schools. And uh, the point's been made, and I have buy into it, that they have a lot of um, players. Uh, students, I should say, that come up through their elementary system. And quite frankly, I wish we had, as a Roman Catholic myself, and so are you, <laughs> I wish we had a Catholic high school in Indiana County. We have an elementary school, and I think we used to have, what, at least two elementary yeah, uh, schools. Yeah, I believe you're right. St. Simon and Jude right. in Blairsville. But we've never had a Catholic high school. So uh, they do it right. There's no question. They're well coached, uh, but it is a benefit being in a big city area like Altoona, drawing from many, many area schools. And uh, case in point is Hayden Garner, who came this year from Southern Huntington. And it was referenced with Coach Felicic that he was originally ruled ineligible for the playoffs, but they got that straightened out. And uh, Hayden Garner uh, is playing in these in these playoffs. So, um, well, we uh, made the point, Mark. They dress 51 kids. There's not, no one in the, the Heritage that's winning 20 of that. Uh, and I, I think that just uh, you have that many more to pick from. The depth is factor is incredible. Certainly makes your practices better, more competitive. It, it, it's tough, and that's why it's such a, you know, to me it's a challenge. And, uh, you know, Homer, Homer certainly had a lot of success doing that, and, the Red Dragons have have equally had success, yep. maybe not so much against Guilfoyle, but in the playoffs. So this is a this is an opportunity for them. I don't think they're it's it's too big for them. Let me put it that way. Yeah, and certainly not to take anything away from Guilfoyle because they are a well coached oh, football my. team and they do they run a lot of uh, uh, sets offensively. They use their personnel well, and the depth certainly is a factor. Ward's going to set the starting lineups for both teams when we come back on our pregame show as we count it down from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking one customer at a time. S&T Bank member FDIC. Coming back to Mansion Park with the starting lineups Welcome right after this Park. on the Purchase Line U92 Radio Football Network. So Marcus and Mac is right here. Unique technological capabilities allow your claim to be processed by phone, text, or email without you ever having to leave your home. Contact the law office of Marcus and Mack. Get all the compensation you deserve. We thank you for social distancing, and please remember the masks are required. Everything's sounding pretty good on your end, Daniel. Seeing our kids suit up for football, cheerleading, or band are once-in-a-lifetime moments our parents just don't want to miss. Current conditions have changed the way we enjoy athletic events. We appreciate every opportunity to watch our kids perform, even if that looks a little different this year. As a community bank, we're happy to partner with Renda Broadcasting's coverage of Heritage Conference football games. We are proud parents and supporters of our local schools. Congratulations and good luck to all students, staff, and everyone involved.
Bears, if you please remain. Well, Ward, the band not certainly as big as the football team. <laughs> just a slight, uh, just slightly smaller. One majorette, four members. <laughs> okay. How do, you, go. how do you keep your composure to do these starting lineups? I don't know how we do that. Okay, let's, let's get into this. For the Marauders of Bishop Go, stop it. Okay. Aiden Garner will be the wideout on the left side. He is a uh, 6'2", 177-pound junior. Left tackle, Reed Edwards, a junior, 6'2", 236. Left guard is Colin Butler, junior, 6'1", 243. Brendan Schaefer is the center. He's a senior, 6'4", 264. Right guard is Anthony Edwards, a junior, at 6'2", 285. The right tackle, Evan Himes, a senior, 6'1", 286. And Andrew Yanishak will be the right end. He's a senior, 6'3", 241. There's no small guys in that bunch. For, for the... Uh, the Marauders in the backfield. Quarterback will be Connor Kaiswiler. Wetter, I'm sorry. Kiesel Weeder. Kiesel Weeder. Kaisi Weeder. Kaisi Weeder. Easy for you to say. A senior, six foot one seventy two. Keegan Myrick is the running back. He's a good one. Senior, six one six foot one seventy one. Zach McCloskey is the fullback. Senior, five ten one eighty five. And Cooper Rother is the slot back. He's a senior, five ten one sixty five. For the Red Dragons. Left end will be M Melo Sanchez, junior 5'10", 147. Also, Andrew Beer will occupy that spot. He is a sophomore, 5'9", 150. Left tackle will be Matt Felasic. He's a junior, 5'10", 245. Vincenzo Scott, junior 5'11", 190, is the left guard. The center is Dylan Bouch, a freshman, 5'10", 250. Guard is Clayton Patrick, right guard. He's a senior. 5'11", 215. The right tackle is Logan McCracken, a senior at 6'195". Gabe Lamer is the tight end. He's a senior, 5'9", 165. In the backfield, quarterback will be John Ellick, freshman, 5'9", 155. Occasionally we'll see the running back, Josh Seister, at that position, but he will be at running back as well, a senior, 5'11", 198. J.C. Brooks is the, half, is the slot back. Junior 5'9", 171. On the other side, you're going to have Brady Seister, a junior at 5'9", 145. And the, the other back there that you'll hear quite a bit from is Isaac Huey. Isaac is a senior, 6'2", 215. Those are the starting offensive lineups, Mark. All right, and we'll get Ward's thoughts on what to expect in this game and what Purchase Line has to do to come out with the victory as the Marauders come out of their locker room, and it looks like they're using the baseball complex. Uh, of course, COVID-19 has affected a lot, of, a lot of things. Normally, that have been down in the locker room below us, which would also be the Altoona Mountain Lines locker room, and there's probably a lot of logistical things they've had to work through to host all of these games because Bishop Guilfoyle uh, shares this stadium with Altoona High School, of course. So uh, that was unusual to see them yeah. entering from the end zone. We're going to come back. Ward will give you the keys to the game for Purchase Line. When we return, you're listening to Purchase Line and hopefully watching too. Purchase Line District 6 semifinal action continuing on the U92 Radio Football Network. Scott Hillsbury here with Colonial Toyota. I'm excited that our doors are finally open and we're happy for all of our other local businesses too. We understand that buying a car right now may not be top priority for some, but for those looking for reliable transportation, we're here for you. With new Toyotas at 0% for 60 months and a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles, there's no better time to buy. So stop in at Colonial Toyota or visit us online at shopcolonialtoyota.com where the experience can't be beat. This is Tessa Bailey from Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas and stock with prices to fit every budget. Weaver's Pools and Spas, Philadelphia. Grown-ups, your car is now your office. Stage, nursery. Shh, sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal, and it's a good deal, too. 
And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person, like this. Your local Erie agent is Hutton Blues Insurance. 724-397-ERIE. Or visit HuttonBlues.com. Erie Insurance been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. Back with you at Mansion Park in El Tuna with Ward Hilliard. I'm Mark Burdick. Our spotter in the booth is Chris Graham. Worked with us last night at Homer Center in their victory over Junietta Valley's Green Hornets. Final score was 27 to 14. Our producer back in Indiana at the WQMU studios is Danielle Pisarchik. Good to be working with Danielle again with Ward Hilliard. I'm Mark Burdick. Next door, the video stream producer is Andy Hart. On the main press box camera, our man, from Homer City, an IUP student, Zachary Vogt, and Caitlin Dots on the camera down below. Uh, so we'll have a couple of camera <laughs> angles for you tonight. I understand things are looking pretty good. And Zach is the man over there. He's been, he traveled with me all the way past this place to Alexandria. Was that last Saturday, right? They all run together after a while. So we made that trip in Juniata Valley two weeks ago. That's right, Zach saying two weeks ago when Juniata Valley unfortunately eliminated the Salzburg Trojans. But Ward, I think the Heritage Conference teams have fared pretty well, put yes, up a have. good fight. We've had some matchups against one another, Purchase Line and West Shemokin. and certainly they were in a Donnybrook uh, shootout type game. Purchase Line's playoff victory in the opening round. And yeah, I'm trying to remember that score as I uh, look at it here, uh, 57 to 35. And then 22-14 over the Pen or 20 to 14 over the Penns Manor Comets and the Red Dragons trailed in that game 14 to nothing yeah, early did. on. And and it's a testament to them having given up the points they did against West Shemokin to come back against a very good offense in, in Penns Manor and hold them to 14 points. So they made some adjustments. We're hoping that carries over to the, till tonight because I think that's a key for them is to control the running game of Bishop Guilfoyle, force them to throw a little bit and try to get them out of their comfort zone. So we are just about set for kickoff here at Mansion Park in Altoona. We're usually, we're on the opposite side in the booth, uh, which is nice. It's our, it's basically our own booth and has its own heater when there's cold nights and we've had, we've had yeah, snow, we we've done games with snow packed yeah, up boy, around the end zone. Remember when we did a Sunday game here because of snow. Yeah. So, but we're on the home side because of the video stream. And thank you to the El Tuna School District and Bishop Guilfoyle for accommodating us and really working with us to make it a great view, I hope, for you at home if you're watching the game. And we'll do our best to call a good one for you. Purchase line will receive kicking off. For Bishop Guilfoyle will be Devin Wyant. Something to look for here. I noticed in their stats, WA, that he averages 55.1 yards per kickoff, which that takes you inside the five. You remember the last couple games we watched, they've always had a good kicker mark. A guy that can put them back here to, to the goal line. So Sanchez, I think, is the deep man. Isaac Huey, actually, I think, is the middle man, and he's flanked by both Seisters. Purchase line in ah, their right. uh, road uniforms, white jerseys, aren't the easiest to read those nah, numbers. No, those numbers are tough. Chris will have his work cut out for him. Here's the kick and looks to be right on his average, right? Right to the five yard line and Huey has it. 10-15, comes near sideline, tripped up, but keeps coming to the 20, gets to the corner, and he's going to be dragged down from behind, and you are right, Ward Hilliard. It was Melo Sanchez, and Keegan Myrick made the tackle Thank you. for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. So purchase line will start at their own 25, maybe 26-yard line. We'll see where they put it down. These old eyes aren't so bad. Huh? Rich DeLeo. So active for so many years. Jody Rainey was telling me, the Heritage Conference president and Homer Center third. principal, that he did a feature uh, interview with Rich over here in El Tuna. So they start 
at their own 25-yard line as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Dragons operate right to left. They come out in an eye formation, and the quarterback is Alec. And Alec hands it off to Seister in only a yard for Seister. You can see right off the bat, the uh, as soon as the ball was snapped, Guilfoyle linebackers came up right away, filling gaps. They know Josh Seister's the key, and that's who they're after. So nice job that time. Four-man front, but those linebackers are constantly coming up, Mark. Cooper Rother on that tackle for Guilfoyle. They have a big front wall, pretty athletic, too. Eye formation, and the freshman hands it off. Seister going to go down, no gain. Defensively. Cameron Maloney, a senior, six foot, 215 pounder. He's fourth on the team with 45 tackles. So purchase line already in a situation they don't want to be in. Third down and long. Third down and nine to be exact. Good penetration once again. Uh, just too many to block. It, it's uh, the, there's probably seven, eight guys coming. Uh, Guilfoyle is wants to dare purchase line to pass, and that was that's a good philosophy. They know that this team is built around the run, so they're going to try to force them out of that. I formation again behind Alec, who's going to boot to his right off the play fake, throwing on the run, and it's caught. I think, did he hang on to it, or was it jarred loose? They're going to say incomplete, right? Yeah. And the intended receiver was hit pretty hard, and that was for purchase line Andrew Beer. Connor Kesewetter, that is how you say it. I went downstairs to get pronunciations from my friend Rich DeLeo. It's Kesewetter on the breakup. So it was a completion, by the way. He did hang on to it. The way they were reacting, I agreed with you that it was incomplete, but it's going to be fourth Whoa. and a long one. And what's purchase line? They're looking like they're going to roll the dice and they go for maybe it. Maybe try to draw them offside. They've had no luck yet running the ball. Boy, this is a risk if they are. And there was movement on purchase line. The fullback moved. Oh, that's a shame. And they were running it. Illegal procedure. Now they'll have to punt. Boy, that was risky, huh? Well, it sure was. Uh, <laughs> early in a ball game like this, you would give them the ball, give uh, Bishop Guilford the ball inside your 35. But was not to be. A uh, penalty took them out of that. And this is one of the keys, Mark. We talked about keys. they got to stay away from that stuff. Turnovers and penalties. Perch line cannot afford to do that. Seister, the punter, Brady, and the snap a bit high, but he gets it out of there, and he kicks it, and it hits a... Uh, I think it hit a Bishop Guilford player, and it was kicked very low. And it hit a Bishop Guilford player, Drew Abraham, and he jumped on it. I don't think the players purchase line had some white jerseys around the ball, but they didn't recognize yeah, nobody what happened. Nobody knew that. The, nobody knew that that ball kicked, was kicked on the line and hit that player. As a matter of fact, the only player that did know was the guy that hit, who recovered it. So the punt goes as a net of eight yards. Well, not the start you'd want. So let's see if the PL defense is going to show up here. And with the football is Myrick, and Myrick, little stutter step move, picks up positive Myrick yardage ball, to about the 36-yard line. On the tackle for the purchase line, Red Dragons was... Left outside linebacker, John Ellick, the freshman, 5'9", 155-pounder. Nice job of coming up and, and keeping that from going even farther. That was pretty much a student body right. Uh, a lot of blockers ahead of him, but uh, Ellick was able to fight through and make the play. Marauders average 348 yards per game, 240 rushing, 108 passing, 35.7 per game. They reposition JT Johnson, tight end left. And they fake it to Myrick, and the quarterback keeps it. And inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line, that was Hayden Garner, the transfer from Southern Huntington that carried that football, finally stopped by Brady Seister. Garner has rushed 20 times for 285 yards. Or correction, 397 yards on 41 carries. He's caught 27 passes, and he also quarterbacks the team. But Kesey Wetter back in there at the Q spot right now. They have a double wing, and Kesey Wetter hands it off to that left wing and upended for a loss. Isaac Huey in there defensively, and it was Myrick, their leading ball carrier, 
that was stopped for a loss. Keegan Myrick, 89 rushes, 679 yards, a 7.6 average, nine touchdowns. Logan McCracken also blew up that play for the Red Dragons. No gain. It'll be second down and 10. Good penetration. You'd need your D-line to get some penetration in against this uh, Marauder offense. Hayden Garner, keep an eye on him. He's receiver to the near side. And there's going to throw Garner's way, and it's deflected. And is it intercepted? It is by on the deflection by the purchase line Red Dragons. Vincenzo Scott on the interception. Pass a little bit high for Hayden Garner. Went through his hands. It deflected in the air and a diving interception by purchase line. Or now what? What are they, they saying? saying? It, was incomp- un- it was not intercepted. So it must oh, have touched the ground. They're going to say he trapped it. Okay. Wow. No replay available, Andy. We need, we need a replay. <laughs> yeah. You're right. well described, Mark. It tipped off his hands. I thought he had it clean by myself. Keegan Myrick, receiver to the right side, and now we have a whistle and a timeout called by the Marauders. We'll take one with Justin Wheeler and Bishop Guilfoyle. 7.46 remaining in the first quarter. We are scoreless on a U92 radio purchase line high school sports night. Nestled in the heart of Indiana County, the Indiana County Technology Center serves over 400 students from eight sending schools across the county. The evolution of our programs follow industry trends, fulfilling unique workforce needs right here in our own backyard. The ICTC is empowering tomorrow's workforce with an engaging, real-life approach to career and technical education. We offer 13 high-demand program areas and a variety of career pathways. Employable, certified, and driven. That is what an ICTC graduate looks like. Back with you, and Kesey Wetter's pass on a post pattern. Jump ball incomplete, knocked out of the hands of Myrick. Good job defensively by Beer. Andrew Beer and Chase Brooks on the coverage. So it'll be fourth down and 10 from the 26. And it looks like they're going to attend a long field goal here. Yofoyle's field goal kicker. Devin Wyant, he's 14 of 14 on PATs, 4 of 6 on field goals, a long of 33, and this is going to be about 43. Right-footed soccer-style kicker. The holder is Adam Chadbourne. The snap is put down, and the kick is up, and the kick has the distance, and the kick is wide left. It is no good. Good job by the Red Dragons. Looked bad for me for a while, but they held. Now their confidence level comes up. Now this is when you want to bust Josh Leister on, on a big run here. Just take some momentum back. You know, the thing about it is their secondary, the Red Dragon secondary is very, very good. Melo Sanchez, I think, has six intercepts this year. Yes, he does. And that's quite a bit for the abbreviated season. So they're pretty tough back there. Here's a rule in high school I don't like. The ball goes to the 20-yard line, yet yeah. in the pros it goes, I think, from the spot. Purchase line averaging 361 yards of offense per game. I'll give you a number that is pretty impressive on the Red Dragons score card and the give off the left side and not a lot going on for Josh Seister. Cameron Maloney, he's been active in the early going. Seister's numbers impressive, 176 rushes, 1,507 yards, 8.6 average. 23 touchdowns. He's thrown for three touchdowns, too, as a quarterback. The number I was going to mention in the turnover ratio department, purchase lines a plus nine. Very good in this shortened season. Nine turnovers, and they've forced 18. And Seister from the Wildcat takes the direct snap, bobbles it, now bounces it outside. Trying to get to the edge, runs through a tackle of Hayden Garner and has a first down over the 30-yard line, up to about the 32. Cooper Rother on the tackle for the Guilfoyle Marauders, but first first down of the game for the Dragons 
to the 32-yard line. Got him to the edge, and, you know, he has got great speed. And there's one advantage, I think, that the, he brings to the to table, Mark, and that's his outside speed. He did a nice job there of beating Garner to the corner and picking up that first down. Now they got some momentum, maybe. Receiver coming to the near side is Gabe Lamer. They come out in an old-fashioned T formation, actually from the shotgun with a sidecar left and right. And a motion, and what do we have? Or maybe even a timeout. Yep, some confusion. I think timeout purchase line will take one with them this time. Matt Felisic will break with him as he talks to his team with 6.47 remaining in this scoreless first quarter. District 6 Class A semifinal action on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School sports night on the Purchase Line U92 Radio Football Network. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi. I want to sincerely thank the people of the 62nd Legislative District for your overwhelming re-election support. I am truly honored to serve as your voice in Harrisburg and look forward to continuing the hard work ahead. Serious challenges face our communities and we will address them through effective leadership, communication, compassion and understanding. My staff and I are dedicated to serving you and working in partnership with our local, state and federal leaders to make all of our lives better. I truly appreciate your support. And let's go vocal teams. For more than a hundred years, the Indiana Regional Medical Center has been your number one health option, always striving to bring you the latest, most innovative medical care, like urgent care, now available in Indiana at MedExpress at 2128 Oakland Avenue. IRMC and MedExpress have formed an exciting new partnership for urgent care services. So when you have a cold or the flu, you've injured yourself and need diagnostic services for a sprain or fracture, your lab work, or have some non-emergency... Brooks, the ball carrier, brought down by Adrian Johnson. Is that Brooks? I didn't catch the number. Line, down two. As we come back, Chase Brooks on a carry near side and tackled. Uh, Chris, I missed that spot. It was Adrian Johnson on the stop for the Marauders. But the uh, Red Dragons ward have opened things up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the uh, shotgunner, the Wildcat formation with Seister is worked yeah they got out of that straight eye formation and this is this is more their comfort zone anyway with Seister there and they hand it off up the middle and spinning uh, very close to a first down I think he's going to have it let's see who let's has the football for the person it is Chase Brooks again McNally. for the Red Dragons Dylan McNally on the tackle inside linebacker 5'9 180 pound senior Chase Brooks 67 rushes coming into the game 358 yards, a five-yard average, three touchdowns to his credit. Back-to-back -back carries gives the Red Dragons another first down. 545 moving clock in this scoreless first quarter on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School sports night. Gabe Lamer, receiver near side for the Dragons. Same formation. And Josh Seister hands it off. And let's see. Over the 45, up to the 46-yard line, Brooks. Yet again, tackled by Cameron Maloney. And limping a little bit uh, for a purchase Game line back to the huddles, six. Isaac Huey. Second down, seven. Nice. Uh, and what they're doing, a little counter move, and then they're using Seister pretty much as a decoy right now, Mark. You see the defense reacts to wherever Josh goes. So I would expect one of these times he's going to fake that oh, yeah. off. Well, head. Very, that's, set, that's what they're setting, I'm sure. Lamer again, a receiver at the bottom of your screen if you're watching, and they do fake it, and Josh Seister keeps it. Josh Seister to midfield, tackled by Zach McCloskey. That's a Bishop Guilfoyle name we all know. The <laughs> Chadbourne we had as the uh, holder earlier. There were two other Chadbournes, um, Evan Chadbourne, and one was a running back, one was the quarterback against yeah. Homer Center back in 2013. So a lot of good athletes. They've had some outstanding basketball teams too at Bishop Guilfoyle. Nice uh, cut there by Josh. That, that play had nowhere to go, but he's able to cut back inside. And he is a strong runner. I think Guilfoyle is finding that out. Third down, big play here and three to go. And they give on an inside reverse and Chase Brooks, one number one tackles number one. And Andrew Yanishak made the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoy Marauders in the backfield. They're going to lose yardage, purchase line does, back to their own 47-yard line, so they'll have to punt. But some things to build on there, perhaps. Yeah, they moved the ball, it, it, and I think they're finding that if they can get to the edge, they've got a chance to get some pretty decent yardage. The trick is to get there. 
Keegan Myrick back to Brady receive Seister. the punt from Brady Seister, who averages 29 and a half yards per punt. This snap is good, and the kick is away. This one better. Floating kick, line drive, should be returnable. Taken by Myrick at the 20, makes a little stutter step move, but good downfield tackle. Great tackle. By there. the purchase line Red Dragons, and it was Andrew Beard on that tackle and purchase line. Now the defense trots out with 328 remaining in this first quarter. We are scoreless. This, I think this works to Penn's purchase line's advantage, Mark. I think, you know, they're settled down now. They, they've had a couple series. They've managed to move the ball a little bit. They've stopped Bishop Guilfoyle in their own territory. So they've got a lot of pluses here. They should be feeling pretty good. Kesey Wetter hands it off, and with running room is Myrick into the secondary up the right sideline into purchase line territory, 50-40. And bounced out of bounds by Melo Sanchez at about the 36-yard line. So that's uh, 30, going to be at the 35 yard line. 35 yard gain. Nice hole opened up on the right side. No center out of my mouth. <laughs> Off Myrick goes with a big gain. Nice call by Sanchez to knock him out of bounds. First and 10 ball on the right hash as we look out of our ST Bank broadcast booth. They have a wingman. To the right in a younger Kesey Wetter. They're going to throw for the end zone for Hayden Garner. Oh, he juggled it and he caught it out of bounds. If he hauls it in and doesn't bobble it, it's a touchdown. But then when he got it back, he was out of bounds halfway down that right sideline deep in the end zone. And the official made the relatively easy and proper call. Andrew Beer was on the coverage, but that should have been six. Yeah, caught the Dragons looking for the run there. Nice play call. Ball was there, but he just could not pull it in he, until he was out of bounds. Break for the Dragons. See if they can capitalize. This time they send Garner, if you're watching, to the top of your screen. And they're going to give to the left wing and smothering Myrick for the Myrick purchase line Red Dragons, Dragons is Thomas Batten. Batten batted him down, didn't he? The 290-pound, six-foot-two junior. A loss of five. It'll be third down and 15. I'm not sure he was blocked. He looked like he shot a gap, was in there all untouched, and just said, come on to Papa, and down he went. Some, uh, boy, down goes looks Byron. like a hockey line change for Guilfoyle. They send in Cooper Rother, Carson Kesey-Wetter, a sophomore. They like the screens, Mark. They Michael Lamb also in there. He alert for the screen. McCloskey is a protector in the backfield. Stepping up in the pocket is Kesey Wetter, and he's throwing for Garner again. Touchdown this time. Same spot on the field, but he didn't bobble this one, and it goes for a 40-yard touchdown pass from Connor Kesey Wetter to Hayden Garner. Kesey Wetter's 11th touchdown pass of the season, and for Garner, he Hauls in his seventh, and it's 6 0 Guilfoyle with 2.29 left in the first quarter. Yeah, that's a shame. It, it, you can't get beat on that on third and long. You just can't get beat deep. Uh, that's all you can say about that. That's exactly what happened. He put it right there. Beautiful pass. And uh, a quick lead here for Guilfoyle. The long snappers, Dylan McNally, Connor Kesey Wetter, the holder. And Wyan's kick is up, and his kick is good. 2.29 left in the first quarter. The Marauders draw first blood on purchase line. They drive 70 yards, 35-yard touchdown pass, or 40-yard touchdown pass to Hayden Garner. It's 7-0 on a U92 radio, Indiana Regional Medical Center, High School Sports Night. Coming is your car ready? The incredible tire sell is on at Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Buy three tires, get the fourth for one dollar. Buy three tires, get the fourth for a buck. Stop in or call Freedom about the most trusted tire brands available. They're all buy three, get the fourth for one dollar. Ask about additional super service specials too. Nobody does tires and service like Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. For more information, call their lucky number at 814-948-7777. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, and I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who voted for my re-election. I'm honored that you placed your trust in me, and with that trust, I guarantee I will continue to work tirelessly on your behalf to address challenges and move our region and our Commonwealth forward. I have every confidence that our future is bright. 
And speaking of our future, I salute all of our young student athletes for competing in the district and state playoffs. As we come back, Wyant's kick is away. Brady Seister takes the rolling kick and brings it up to about the 30-yard line, about a 20-yard return. A.J. Kilmartin on the kick coverage. So some work to do for the Red Dragons. You know, having a kicker like that is able to put the ball deep downfield just helps their whole coverage unit. They get down pretty well, so most of these drives are going to start neighborhood of 30. At the 31 in this case, and I think it's Seister still at the quarterback position, takes the direct snap, tries coming near side and can't do it. He's gonna lose some yardage from one side of the 30 back inside the 30 yard line to about the 29 on the tackle and the penetration, Adrian Johnson, left defensive tackle, senior 5'9", 180, leads the team or actually third on the team with 48 tackles. Leading tackler is Andrew Yanishek. He's the right defensive end right now. Now he shifts over to the left. He leads the team with 55 tackles. They have some size and athleticism. Purchase line with a tight end right. And they send a man in motion out of the backfield and Josh Seister keeps it in three tough yards. And it's Yanishek that brought him down. So Seister just took that direct snap and purchase line in these uncomfortable situations for them were third down and nine. Yeah, and they're just not able to get him to the edge. If they've got to find a way to get him out where his speed can be utilized. He's picking his gaps, but uh, there's not a lot of gaps to pick from right now. Receiver near side is Dylan Overman, a senior, for purchase line. Same formation, but they send Sanchez in motion and they flip it out in the flat to him and Mello takes it in stride and that good speed has a first down to the 40 to the 45 to the midfield and he fumbles the football and it looks like, let's see, did Gilfoyle oh, come up with it? I think they may have. Let's see. Nope, oh. they're going to say purchase line came out of that wow. scrum with the football. What a break that was. So from the 32, they do pick up the third and long distance. And it ends up being 18, 21-yard uh, 21 game. I did that in my head, Mark. Pretty impressive. Thank you. Nice catch, nice run after catch. Big play. And that's the kind of thing that they have to do. Perch line needs to get to the edge. From the BG, 47. Logan McCracken recovered that fumble. Seister's going to pass. He's going to throw deep downfield and not able to run under it. But there's a flag as impeding that receiver, and I'm, let's see if we can get the spot. I think it's Andrew Beer. Yes, it was. Running the fly down the right sideline on the far side of the field. And I think Hayden Garner, maybe the guilty party. They might have been impeding his possession or his, uh, his run. So that'll be. Fischl was right there. So, you know, <laughs> I don't think there's any debate. He saw something. By the way, I looked at a couple of those interference penalties uh, last <laughs> night on the video. And I'm sure I, I was wrong. I uh, hate to tell you, but uh, yes, and I talked to Coach Page about them today. Was, that's a fan in me. I got to get that out of me here. But in this case, that, that was, uh, I thought, a fair call, and it gives the Dragons an opportunity, again, using Seister. This would be very, very huge for purchase line if they could answer BG's score. In motion out of the backfield is uh, Seister. They give to Jace Brooks. Breaks the tackle inside to 30 and chase down to about the 27-yard line. On the tackle, it was Zach McCloskey. Five-yard pickup. Yep, you'll take that on first down. Yes, sir. To the 27. Might have witnessed the final play of the first quarter. Trotting in for Bishop Guilfoyle defensively is Colin Butler. They have so much depth on this team, and that is going to be the final play of the first quarter. Bishop Guilfoyle with the only score on the 40-yard touchdown strike on a third down play from Kesey Wetter to quarter, Hayden Garner. We're going to head to the second purchase line in BG territory when we return. Thanks to friends of Jim Struzzi. Congratulations to State Rep Jim Struzzi on winning his bid for re-election and representing Indiana County. 
Coming back to Mansion Park in Altoona man, on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Marauders 7, Red Dragons nothing on the U90. Pediatric Care Center of Indiana and Marion Center are proud to support our students. This is the tire man, James Cypress from Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center at Luther Ford with bad news and some good news. The bad news is winter is coming. The good news, if you need tires, we can help. Buy three tires and you'll get the fourth one free. Plus, we offer at least eight of the most popular tire brands in the country. The tire man will also throw in free lifetime tire rotation and a free alignment check we will match or beat any competitor's price but hurry offer ends november 30th at quick lane tire and auto center at luther ford route 119 homer city of indiana and marion center are proud to support our student athletes in tonight's game each athlete has represented their school district and their community to the best of their ability in these challenging times doctors rizwan and amina jabber physicians assistant nikki phillips and the entire staff at both locations would like to wish all of the athletes best of luck tonight and in the future the pediatric care center two locations 119 professional center in indiana and the mahoning medical center highway 403 in marion center Back with you at Mansion Park. Thank you, Diamond Medical Supply. Brady Seister in motion out of the backfield on second and five. Josh Seister keeps it, bounces it outside. Gets inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Andrew Janicek, the defensive end, making the tackle. They're going to spot it at the 25, but third down and three, two cracks to get this. Yeah, it should be uh, it should be advantage purchase line right now. See what they come up with. Been uh, trying to use Josh a lot off play fakes. Might just get try to get him to the edge right off the bat here. Dylan Overman, a receiver to the left boundary. Beer near side, and there's false start. And boy, that's uh, those are your dry. drive, Keeler. Oh, Keeler's work. Man, I hate seeing oh, that. So that's going to back them up and make it a third down and eight. Want to pass along a couple of college scores for you. Final score, believe it or not, Penn State is 0 and 3. Wow. They lost at home to Maryland, 35 to 19, and Pitt with six minutes remaining, leading at Florida State. 41 to 17. Interesting game tonight. Notre Dame hosting Clemson. Clemson without without the all-star Trevor Lawrence. What a player he is. Still pretty good. <laughs> they have a pretty sensational freshman. Low snap, and now Seister breaks a tackle, and now heads far sideline. Runs through another tackle and has a first down. Outstanding effort by Josh Seister. Hayden Garner finally stopped him. Looked like he was trapped in his own backfield war and he broke free. He was trapped. <laughs> he was dead on dead in the water there, but he broke clear, got to the edge, and then broke another tackle. He got 10 yards on that. A beautiful run. Was Good that Yanis check in the backfield that almost had him? What was it, 15 yards? I had him 10 there. Oh, 10? 30 to the 20. It was a third and eight. But first and 10, they're in the red zone. Direct snap, and they give on a spinning handoff, and Chase Brooks going to be Brooks tackled for a loss. Again, Cameron Maloney and Run Colin Butler also Johnson assisting. Colin Butler. Let, me, let me tell you what little I know about this game. When you're getting the penetration that Guilfoyle's getting with their D-line, those counters aren't going to work because they're already – those guys are in the backfield when that counter occurs. Down, down he goes. The whole idea is to confuse them or get them to, to – com- commit to a gap and leave a, left, leave a hole open off that counter. They're not working. They need to go straight sweeps. Second down and 12. Brady Seister, they flip it to him out in the flat. He was in motion away from the formation, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage by Keegan Myrick. So that will make it third and 10. Pretty nicely designed play award. It just... Well, it's well you know, defended. It's one guy. If the one guy misses, you got a big gain. He didn't miss. <laughs> Simple as that. It's a good defense they're playing here. You know, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of stuff you want to do, they're not going to let you do. So you got to see, dial up what you do best. And what the Dragons do best is is run these sweeps. Third down and twelve from the twenty-two. Josh Seister. They fumble the ba- football. They the exchange in the backfield and purchase line recovers it but a loss on the play. And that was Brady Seister is a mix up with Josh and they lose yardage back to the 27. Too bad because they had things cooking on this drive. And now they're faced with a fourth down and 17. 
27-yard line. That was uh, unfortunate. They, again, they're trying these play fakes, and the ball is actually, he's riding the runner, Mark. When that occurs, sometimes the kid grabs the ball when you don't want him to. This big play here. Six, 8.45 remaining. First half, 7 nothing. Guilfoyle. Seister looking to pass. Pump fake now pressured. They try dragging him down. He breaks free, throws too low for the intended receiver, Huey. And Bishop Guilfoyle is going to take over on downs. We'll step out for 30 seconds. 8.36 left in the first half. 7 nothing. Bishop Guilfoyle on the U92 Radio Football Network. This is Tessa Bailey from Weavers Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas in stock with prices to fit every budget. Weaver's Pools and Spas, Philadelphia Street. Myers, the ball carrier. Knocked down by Melo Sanchez. Keegan Myrick on the carry as we come back to action on U92.5 FM. Around the left side for about five yards from the 27 to the 32. Melo Sanchez came up to drop him. Gain of almost five. It'll be second down and five. Bishop Guilfoyle leading seven to nothing. Pretty rapidly paced first yeah, half. Yeah, a lot of running. A lot of running. Uh, not too many passes. Looks like Hayden Garner in at quarterback, and it is. And the read option, and he breaks into the secondary. He's to midfield. He's going to take it the distance. Look at him run at the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Dragging him down in the end zone. Purchase line, Red Dragons, but they go to Garner at the quarterback, and that was read option. We see a lot of that from Ben Schmidt of Homer Center, and Garner takes it 68 yards for a touchdown. Yep. Not much you could say. Nice cut. He had turned the Jets on. Nobody home for the Red Dragons. A big score and a real backbreaker here in this game. The Dragons trying to get into it, trying to score. Now are down two scores. Attempting the extra point will be Devin Wyan out of the hold of sophomore Connor Kesey Wetter. Long snappers Dylan McNally, and the kick is. Up, and the kick is good. Teams come upfield. 7.49 remaining in the first half. Guilfoyle, defense set it up with the big stand. And then Hayden Garner, an explosive splash play. 68-yard run, 14-0 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the Purchase Line, U92 Radio Football Network. Been involved in a collision or accident? Call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724 254 9417. So Marcus and Mac is right here. Unique technological capabilities allow your claim to be processed by phone, text, or email without you ever having to leave your home. Contact the law office of Marcus and Mac. Get all the compensation you deserve. Kids suit up for football, cheerleading, or band are once-in-a-lifetime moments our parents just don't want to miss. Current conditions have changed the way we enjoy athletic events. We appreciate every opportunity to watch our kids perform, even if that looks a little different this year. As a community bank, we're happy to partner with Renda Broadcasting's coverage of Heritage Conference football games. We are proud parents and supporters of our local schools. Congratulations and good luck to all students, staff, and everyone involved. Fourteen nothing is why it has it teed up. Marauders with the lead over the Red Dragons. Melo Sanchez back deep. This is a short little pooch kick coming near side and uh, does go out of bounds from this angle. I thought it was going to stay in bounds. So purchase line will have the option, and they might be advised just to take it at the 35-yard line. I think that's a good choice. This kid can kick the ball pretty well. Colonial Motor Mart, Colonial Toyota Drive summary for Bishop Guilfoyle. Two plays, 73 yards. It took 47 seconds. That's the kind of stuff, obviously, if Perch Line does not want to allow happen. And, and, you know, I'm kind of disappointed. And they're kind of losing their composure. These little mishandles, the, the fumbles, the drop snaps. 
you can't keep doing those kinds of things when you're playing a quality team like this. So they've got to clean their act up, and this is the best time to do it. They were down 14, zip the Penns Manor. That's where we're at right now. They need to do something. They ruled that the kick went out of bounds at the 38, so the Red Dragons do indeed take it there, and they have a tight formation with the freshman Alec back in there, and it's a toss, and with it is Chase Brooks, and Chase over the 40 to about the 41 for a gain of three. On the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, Andrew Janicek. Marauders are sure tacklers. I think that you can see that's pretty evident, Mario. They don't miss too many. A.J. Kilmartin also in on that tackle. Twin receivers Chase Brooks and Andrew Beer to the near side for purchase line as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth window. And... A flag as the play gets underway. Where's Denny Mester? Our windows could use a yeah, little Windex. Yeah, we need some Windex here. And it, again, there's a, there's a false start, a procedure penalty. Somebody moved. Puts you behind the chains, Ward. It, and it, it just kills your drive. Makes it tougher to pick up the first down. It's tough enough as it is. So they only needed seven. Now they're going to need 12. You know, the problem, too, is Perch Line does throw the ball, but they're not really noted for that. And this is, a, this is where a situation where some play action might loosen that defense up, but uh, Guilfoyle's not worrying about that. They're playing tough against the run. Second down and 11 as the Dragons are behind the chains. Motion man is Seister and Alec. Play action, going to throw far sideline, hauled in, but out of bounds by Purchase Lines' Dylan Overman. Pretty well thrown ball by the young yes. Alec, a freshman 5'9", 155-pound player. Connor Kesewetter on the uh, coverage. Alec, 8 of 16 for 145 yards, has not thrown an interception, has thrown one touchdown pass. Be nice to, to, to get him a, you know, a kind of a safe pass. I always say there's little five-yard outs. Nice safe pass for the kid to get uh, a little confidence. That was a deep ball, well thrown, but unfortunately, no, no dice. Here's Alec again, steps up in the pocket. He's going to be hit and dropped unceremoniously by Adrian Johnson. Johnson sacks him, and Purchase Line's going to have to punt and slowly wart. Um, this game is slipping away. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Mark. And, and uh, uh, that was a series there that the Dragons needed to move the ball somewhat. they got to get into their bag of tricks and come up with something. They don't want to give up a third score here. And right now, all the momentum is with these guys here in the purple. Seister, Brady Seister to punt. What's a ceremonious tackle then? Unceremoniously. Unsum There's a low kick again. And Guilfoyle... Allows it to bounce, and it's touched down at the 25-yard line. That's where Guilfoyle will take over when we return, leading 14 to nothing on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School sports night on the U92 Radio Football Network. 39 yards on the punt. No matter who you are or where you are, CNB Bank makes it easy to take care of life's necessities, like paying Uncle Rick back for lunch. Or depositing that paycheck for dog sitting. And even if you prefer to bank, the more traditional way, we still rock that too. Welcome to CNB Bank. Experience better banking at CNB Bank. Look at it. This time it's Keegan Myrick who lines up in the Wildcat and takes the direct snap and around the right end, positive yardage, and seven there. John Alec stopped him. Where that's what the third quarterback they've used that's taken a snap. Kesey yeah. Wetter, the starter, and they've uh, used Hayden Garner. And now Keegan Myrick, the running back, taking the direct snap. Just a little wrinkle they throw in there. Keep the defense off balance. Second down and about three. Football resting at the Marauder 32 yard line on the right hash. They operate right to left. Keegan Myrick in motion. And instead, they give it up the middle. It's clogged up, and McCloskey breaks a tackle and has a first down up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Chase Brooks on the tackle for the purchase line Red Dragons. 
Chase, fourth on the team with 44 tackles, also has an interception to his credit. They mix things up where they uh, they bring they shuffle more players in and out offensively and defensively. Well, if you see the sideline here, you, you've got a, a core of players on the ball side, and then on the other side of the 50, I think you're looking at their JV squad. They're all down on that side. Yep, I think you're right. And that's there's still a big more. separation. There, there's a there's lot of big gap. McCloskey, big hole up the middle, lowers the shoulder, punishing run, picks up about six. Isaac Huey on the stop for the purchase line, Red Dragons. Huey outside linebacker, he leads the purchase line defense with 61 tackles. Football resting at the 43-yard line. I wonder if any of them play instruments because the band could use a few. <laughs> It could use quite a few. I'm not trying to make fun of the fact. It's no, just those, the, they, good, they belted out that national anthem. Yeah, they did. The trumpet was very really good. Second down and four. Maybe music in the arts. It's not the thing know. at BG. Kesey Wetter, the handoff, and McCloskey again as he McCloskey becomes the workhorse. Isaac Huey again on the stop. Huey, an excellent football player, a senior, 6'2", 215 pounder. Purchase line starts, and this is good for the future award. They on defense, three seniors, six juniors, a sophomore, and a freshman, that being Alec, who's done a good job. And on the offensive side, purchase line, Four seniors, five juniors, and two sophomores. Yeah. So that kind of sets things up nicely You've for next nice, year. Got a nice group coming back. And I'm of course, sure you lose Josh Seisler. You, you lose a lot. You lose your main man right now. McCloskey came up inches short of the first down. So it was a Wetter, or no, that's Myrick that takes the direct snap. Keegan Myrick, and he lowers uh, the shoulder, runs low to the ground, and picks up enough for the first down to midfield. Thomas Batten on the stop for purchase line. But new set of downs with 3.21 to play in this first half. And Guilfoyle that scored a touchdown in each of the first two quarters, and they lead 14 to nothing. I think it's a big series here for the Dragon D. They have got to stop Guilfoyle, keep them out of the end zone so they have a shot at this team. Myrick, a receiver to the left, and Kesey Wetter is going to throw over the middle. Has the tight end, JT Johnson, inside the 40, down to about the 37, 38-yard line. Chase Brooks on the tackle. Well-designed play. They spread the field out for it. He found a seam over the middle. I believe I mentioned they like running screens, and that's exactly what they did. It's well done. They let the Dragons through, and, boy, they should have knew something was amiss there. <laughs> Here we go, Marauders with a first and 10 at the 36-yard line. And Kesey Wetter hands it off. Myrick Big Hole cuts it up inside the 25 down to about the 21-yard line. Right now, Guilfoyle having their way, opening up big holes up front. Andrew Beer on the tackle for the uh, purchase line. Chris, I need my blue folder, so I think I need to give this guy a check, too. Is this it? I actually need to ask you a question if you can hang around for a second. Is this it? Yeah, oh, that's it. Okay, I got it, Chris. Thanks. Um, let's see. Back As I turn around and look back out the window of our S&T Bank broadcast booth at Mansion Park, first and 10 from the Red Dragon 21 on a jet sweep. Myrick takes the handoff from Kesey Wetter and cuts it back and gets down to close to the 15-yard line. Chase Brooks on the stop for purchase line. They're just grinding it out. It, it, nothing they'd like more if you're Guilfoyle is to punch one in the end zone. At 150 and counting here in the second quarter, purchase line would have virtually no time to do anything about it. So they've got to keep them out of there if they want to stay in this game. Second down from the 17-yard line, six to go. Want to thank Joe and the crew from Bishop Guilfoyle for the accommodations in the Altoona School District, and I think that's Hayden Garner that took that direct Garner snap. Yes, it was. He gets inside the 15, down to about the 14-yard line. Logan McCracken on the stop for the purchase line Red Dragons. McCracken, one of the three senior starters on defense, six foot, 195 pounds. Third down, short for Guilfoyle. They lead 14 to nothing with just about a minute to play in this first half. They'd like to tack one more on. Kesey Wetter, nope, it's Myrick. Again, taking the direct snap, dancing through an opening, gets inside the 10. It's going to set up first and goal for the Marauders. Boy, they mix things up. We've seen Myrick, Garner, 
with the direct snap, he ran on the read option for 68 yards. And of course, the starting quarterback, Connor Kiesewetter, Chase Brooks on that tackle. They put it down right at the 10. And it's first and goal. Probably going to need a timeout if they don't score on this play. Timeout department, both teams have two remaining. Very methodical drive, using clock, gaining yards. And a whistle. And let's see, do we have a flag or a timeout called by the Red Dragons? I think we may have a timeout. No, we have a illegal procedure on Bishop Guilfoyle, so that will back them up five yards. Dragons could use that, too. Now, here's play action coming up, so they best be alert to that. Those corners need to stick with these receivers. They got burned one time on that. They restart the clock. First down's a good time. We're, on, we're under second 30 down. seconds, and uh, they are going to take a timeout now, so we'll take one with them. Timeout. We'll step out for 30 seconds with 25 seconds remaining in the first half, or, yeah, first half on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Marauders 14, Red Dragons nothing on the Purchase Line, U92 Radio Football Network. Nestled in the heart of Indiana County, the Indiana County Technology Center serves over 400 students from eight sending schools across the county. The evolution of our programs follow industry trends, fulfilling unique workforce needs right here in our own backyard. The ICTC is empowering tomorrow's workforce with an engaging, real-life approach to career and technical education. We offer 13 high-demand program areas and a variety of career pathways. Employable, certified, and driven. That is what an ICTC graduate looks like. Purchase line trying to escape this first half. Yeah, this is a big, like I said, a big series. They, they need to at least keep them out of the end zone. Guilfoyle, I believe, receives the second half. I want to thank Joe Landolfi from Bishop Guilfoyle. He's in the booth with us. Joe, you said there's a halftime buffet with filet mignon and pasta? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'll be right up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> First and goal, but from the 15 after the five-yard penalty, and Kesey Wetter flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his left. He has running room, left sideline, 10-5, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown for the Marauders. Excellent job, Wardy. Felt the pressure, bounced it outside, and just got inside that orange pylon on the left corner of the end zone. And with 18 seconds left in the first half, it's now Bishop Guilfoyle 20 and purchase line nothing. Just a backbreaker. They got the uh, purchase line had pressure up the middle, but they didn't have anybody on that left side. Kesey Wetter, smart kid, saw that, just sprinted. 15 yards untouched, pretty much. And big, attempting big the extra point out of the hold of Connor Kesey Wetter. His brother just ran for 15 yard touchdown. It is Devin Wyatt, and Devin's kick is up, and Devin's kick is good. He's now 17 of 17 this season. 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Marauders, a comfortable 21 to nothing lead. Purchase line football continues on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School sports night on the U92 Radio Football Network. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi. I want to sincerely thank the people of the 62nd Legislative District for your overwhelming re-election support. I am truly honored to serve as your voice in Harrisburg and look forward to continuing the hard work ahead. Serious challenges face our communities and we will address them through effective leadership, communication, compassion and understanding. My staff and I are dedicated to serving you and working in partnership with our local, state and federal leaders to make all of our lives better. I truly appreciate your support. And let's go vocal teams been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's 81 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. No, no, no. Coming back. Fair catch called for by Gabe Lemur at the 41 yard line. Perkins line takes over, first and 10. As we come back to our ST Bank broadcast booth on U92.5 FM, rejoining a little bit late on the video stream, it was a pooch kick and a fair catch called for by Gabe Lamer wisely. 
and it's purchase line ball with only 18 seconds left at their own 41-yard line. That's a smart play, Mark. You know, a lot of times kids will try to catch that. The defense is right on top of them. Usually they'll get popped, the ball pop loose, and they'll have a shot at uh, going for another touchdown. But Lamer did a nice job calling the fair catch. John Ellick, the freshman quarterback, take up. Oh, no, he wants to pass, and he's sorry he did. He's sacked for a loss by Cameron Maloney. And Maloney, Guilfoyle saying they have the ball off of a fumble, and they do. Boy, I thought Ellick was down, but they I heard. I thought I heard a whistle, which would have said the play was dead. Zach McCloskey recovered it. He's applied the pressure too, right? So forced fumble and a recovery and the chance for them to do more damage, although there's only nine seconds left. They still have a timeout though, so they, they can complete something in midfield and uh, call time, take another shot at the end zone. Plus they could kick. Yeah, it's true. A short pass and let's see what they do here from the purchase line, 31 yard line. They empty the backfield, and Hayden Garner, or no, that is Kesey Wetter, number two and not number eight. And uh, flag and sideline warning against Purchase Line. So no harm, no foul, right? Yep. Gil Foyle fans love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they weren't too happy with the call. I think they thought the whistle had blown on that fumble. I don't know if it did good, or not. As we look across the way, good crowd from Purchase Line. Yeah, they do. They had a nice turnout. Of course, as attendance they everywhere is limited. Kesey Wetter flushed out of the pocket, rolling, throwing for the end zone. Mello Sanchez, seventh interception at the two-yard line. Mello dancing around at the 10, and he's tackled from behind as the Mello half comes to an end. As Cooper Rother tackled him from behind, but Mello, oh, man, he's been a force in that secondary. His seventh interception of the season for the junior, and the first half is over. Stay with us for our Colonial Motor Mart and Colonial Toyota Halftime Report. We'll recap the first half and give you uh, a look at the stats as well when we come back to Mansion Park and Altoona, District 6 Class A semifinal action. Winner will move on to next weekend's championship game the the against the Homer Center Wildcats. 21-0 Marauders at the break. You're listening to Purchase Line Football on the U92 Radio Football Network. Christy Sweet was diagnosed with breast cancer at just 32 years old. Fortunately, IRMC Cancer Center, in partnership with UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, is just 20 minutes from her home. Today, after a chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and radiation therapy, Christy is cancer-free. Learn more about Christy's story and the world-renowned cancer care right here in Indiana at upmchillman.com forward slash IRMC. Maybe you've heard of the colonial experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the colonial experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com Nestled in the heart of Indiana County, the Indiana County Technology Center serves over 400 students from eight sending schools across the county. The evolution of our programs follow industry trends, fulfilling unique workforce needs right here in our own backyard. The ICTC is empowering tomorrow's workforce with an engaging, real-life approach to career and technical education. We offer 13 high-demand program areas and a variety of career pathways. Employable, certified, and driven. That is what an ICTC graduate looks like. Every day, businesses find ways to face whatever challenge that day brings. Communities find new ways to come together, and families find more ways to stay connected. At First Commonwealth, we're ready to help you along the way, to help businesses take care of business, to help strengthen communities, 
and to help our neighbors look forward with confidence to whatever each day brings. We're ready, we care, and we're here to help.
to find Marching Red Dragon are directed by Mrs. Rebecca Bowes and Mrs. Amanda Cheese. This year's show is dedicated to everyone considered a superhero. Our opener is Indiana Jones with Devin Tomlinson as Indiana Jones. Our second number, Spider-Man, features Diesel Joe as Spider-Man and Dylan Rebovic as the villain. Our final number is Superman and features commanding officers Samuel Kaufman and Kelly Jennings as trumpet soloists. Drum majors are Terry Bugay and Aaron Wright. We would like to thank Manson Park for hosting us this evening. Congratulations to drum major Aaron Wright for his placement at the State Cross Country Competition in her season. <laughs>
got batteries. I got battery. This is Tessa Bailey from Weavers Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weavers Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas and stock with prices to fit every budget. Weavers Pools and Spas, Philadelphia Street. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com Seeing our kids suit up for football, cheerleading, or band are once-in-a-lifetime moments our parents just don't want to miss. Current conditions have changed the way we enjoy athletic events. We appreciate every opportunity to watch our kids perform, even if that looks a little different this year. As a community bank, we're happy to partner with Renda Broadcasting's coverage of Heritage Conference football games. We are proud parents and supporters of our local schools. Congratulations and good luck to all students, staff, and everyone involved. Christy Sweet was diagnosed with breast cancer at just 32 years old. Fortunately, IRMC Cancer Center, in partnership with UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, is just 20 minutes from her home. Today, after a chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and radiation therapy, Christy is cancer-free. Learn more about Christy's story and the world-renowned cancer care right here in Indiana at upmchillman.com forward slash IRMC. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, and I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who voted for my re-election. I'm honored that you placed your trust in me, and with that trust, I guarantee I will continue to work tirelessly on your behalf to address challenges and move our region and our Commonwealth forward. I have every confidence that our future is bright. And speaking of our future, I salute all of our young student athletes for competing in the district and state playoffs. Is your car ready? The incredible tire sale is on at Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Buy three tires, get the fourth for one dollar. Buy three tires, get the fourth for a buck. Stop in or call Freedom about the most trusted tire brands available. They're all buy three, get the fourth for one dollar. Ask about additional super service specials too. Nobody does tires and service like Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. For more information, call their lucky number at 814-948-7777. More than a hundred years, the Indiana Regional Medical Center has been your number one health option, always striving to bring you the latest, most innovative medical care, like Urgent Care, now available in Indiana at MedExpress at 2128 Oakland Avenue. IRMC and MedExpress have formed an exciting new partnership for urgent care services. So when you have a cold or the flu, you've injured yourself and need diagnostic services for a sprain or fracture, your lab work, or have some non-emergency health issue, visit MedExpress, 2128 Oakland Avenue in Indiana.
Byers. And, uh, Melissa Mertz. They, it was a tough decision going against the old warden, Governor Wolf. And <laughs> I think they made the, the right call. I think, for the most part, things have worked out yeah. relatively well. Yeah, well, we've made comments on this many times. You know, players like Seisser and, and Schmidt wouldn't have had the opportunity to do things they did. And you know, a lot of times these are springboards for these guys into uh, uh, some extra help uh, when they, if they go to college. They get a little scholarship money, things of that nature. Uh, but it's just a chance to play your senior year as a football player. And, boy, goodness, you know, if you love the game, I'm sure. I know Ben does. I know my son Michael, when he played, just loved football. To miss his senior year would have been just agonizing. It would be something you can never replace. So, thank goodness they were able to get to this point. Purchase line is going to have to uh, kick off to yeah. Bishop Gilpo. And you On the Marauder side, I said with Matt Felicic, what does he say to his team? I think if you're Justin Wheeler, you want to deliver a firm knockout punch here to start the yeah, second I, half. I'm, I'm sure their goal is to get the ball, and move it down the field, punch it in, and then uh, – they're pretty much on cruise control. They're pretty close to that already. We think the District 6 championship game will be Friday night, but not confirmed as of yet. And kicking off for the purchase line Red Dragons will be Logan McCracken. Gilfoyle is expecting maybe some chicanery here. They're looking for the onsider. Nine guys up tight. And uh, it, that kick is going to go backwards. It hit a, it was going to be an onside kick, but it hit a purchase line player, and that's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. It goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line, it appears, of purchase line, which would be a kickoff of negative three. Now Bishop Guilfoy would have the option of taking it at their own 35. I think they're going <laughs> to take where it went out. Again, he tried to hit kick it on the side of the ball, and when you do that, it, it's like a top. You know, if you kick it too much to the side, it just spins. That one, I haven't seen too many like it. Spun backwards. I think it hit. I think it hit. And it did. I think it hit a guy, too. But uh, it had enough spin on it that it took it back. We saw Ben Schmidt kick one last night. Only, Only went, went eight, eight yards. yards. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. It's an art. And unfortunately, oh, my. Does well, that set Guilfoyle up? Yeah, short field now. <laughs> For the Marauders as if they needed it. And they send Keegan Myrick to the right boundary near the purchase line bench. If you're watching tonight, at the bottom of your screen is the talented Hayden Garner, the transfer from Southern Huntington. And with the football, Keesley Wetter, or Myrick I should say, coming near side to the 20-yard line for a gain of about 12. Vinny Scott, Vincenzo Scott, the junior, made the tackle for the Red Dragons. Yeah, that's just the old jet sweeper there, and a uh, nice job of sealing off the end. Big pickup on their first play. At the 20-yard line, they're in the red zone already. Dragons need a turnover here, and then uh, Guilfoyle not noted for doing that. Connor Kesey-Wetter last year missed a good chunk of the season due to injury, came back. Uh, I think in time for the playoffs or maybe a game into the playoffs. He takes the snap and he throws and has a receiver, Andrew Yaniszczyk. Yaniszczyk, just a short pattern, kind of a, wasn't really a slant. Andrew Beer made the tackle, just kind of like a, the old you know, midget football. We'd call that the button hook. The old button hook down, turned around about seven yards downfield. That's what he got. That's, those are the kind of safe passes I thought they'd try to do with Ellick. Third down and two. And with the football, oh, big hit. Was that Kesey Wetter on the carry? Let's see. They've, uh, no, that was Myrick. Myrick, Keegan Myrick on the carry. They've used so many players, it's hard to keep track, and they're two and three and eight, and they're hard to spot from up here. Isaac Huey. On the stop, no gain. Good defense by Huey, along with Clayton Patrick. Huey's excellent defensive player. Patrick second on the team with 54 tackles. And you can add to that total. So from the 12-yard line of the Red Dragons, the Marauders are faced with the third and a deuce. Kesey Wetter to the left boundary. Myrick takes the direct snap. Comes near sideline, cuts it up, has a first down at the 10. 
down to about the eight yard line, maybe the seven. Vincenzo Scott and Clayton Patrick combined to make that tackle. Two minutes into this third quarter, Guilfoyle leading 21 to nothing and seven yards away from making it 27 nothing. Yeah, I, I, again, it's, they need something miraculous to happen here, the Red Dragons do. In the backfield now is Dylan McNally as they have trips in the backfield to give to Myrick. Myrick plows inside the five down to about the three-yard line. Some white jerseys getting up off the bottom of that pile. One of them was Max Felisic, and he had some help, but uh, positive gain, Isaac Huey, and... Batten also being credited. Second down and goal from the four ball on the left hash, wide side of the field toward the purchase line bench. Corner's got to be alert to any play action stuff, but really the center of that defense needs to be on the attack right now. Tight end left is J.T. Johnston. And they load up the left side and they give to Myrick. Myrick to the goal line to the end zone touchdown. Well, they just went power left and went behind that big offensive line led by center Brandon, Brendan Schaefer, 264 pounder, and left guard Colin Butler, a 6'1, 243 pound guard. And Myrick plows in and it's 27 0. And we, uh, is it an injury, Chris? Kevin Ryan to attempt the extra point. Oh. Hobbling off the field, Isaac Huey. Yeah, he was hurting in the first half a little bit. Long snappers, Dylan McNally out of the hold of Connor Kesey-Wetter. Devin Wyant's extra point extra kick is up, is and it is good toward the scoreboard, which now reads 28-0. Marauders with 9-0-1 remaining in the third quarter. Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night coverage continues on the Red Dragon U92 Radio Football Network. Introducing... Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. Pediatric Care Center of Indiana and Marion Center are proud to support our student athletes in tonight's game. Each athlete has represented their school district and their community to the best of their ability in these challenging times. Doctors Rizwan and Amina Jabber, physician's assistant Nikki Phillips, and the entire staff at both locations would like to wish all of the athletes best of luck tonight and in the future. The Pediatric Care Center, two locations, 119 Professional Center in Indiana and the Mahoning Medical Center, Highway 403 in Marion Center. Getting out of hand for a purchase line. Bishop Guilfoyle flexing their muscle and approaching the football is Devin Wyant. Long spinning kick heading toward the end zone and it's going to roll in for a touchback. He has a good leg, doesn't he? Yeah, that's pretty good boot there. Went about down to the two yard line, bounced into the end zone. So the Dragons are gonna set up on your favorite yard line, the 20. It's so another <laughs> difference I don't understand where the pros in this yeah. situation, it goes to the 25, yet at the high school level, it's still at the 20. doesn't make sense to me. As I'm appealing Jerry's uh, raw size request on a quarterback <laughs> kneel down being charged his team yardage yeah. instead of a quarterback loss. Well, there's a the little things that make this game the great game that it is. Dragons need to drive here. Yes, they do. Motion man is Josh Seister, and the pitch is behind him. That'll slow things up, but Josh trying to make the best of it. And he, boy, he does, doesn't he, up yep. to about the 25-yard line. And we have an injury back upfield. And uh, I think that is, looks like. I'm not sure. I can't see. make the number up. Connor Kesey-Wetter made that tackle. I thought it was John Allen, but I can't get a spot on the number. I think it must be Alec Ward. Because, yeah, it is it's Alec. Alec. Good six-yard pickup there for Yeah, and that pitch Seister. was behind him. Yeah, the, the, the Dragons have been doing this all night. They've been bobbling the ball on snaps. They haven't had good exchanges on their handoffs. There's another example. That, it's a slow, that messes your offense up. Second down and four. Mentioned the good crowd from Purchase Line making the way over. 
and attendance limited, but in a stadium like this, they allow more in yeah. because it's based on a percentage, of course, and um, yeah, nice representation. And they give, and with the football for purchase line, Brady Seister, Brady Seister. Seister gonna be close to a first down, might be inches shy. On the tackle, Dylan McNally for the uh, Marauders. So it'll be third down, less than a yard for purchase line. Eight minutes third remaining in the third run. quarter. They trail 28 to nothing. See Alec going to go under his center. Dylan Bouch. Lone setback. And they give it to Seister. There was some confusion on that, and Seister out of bounds for a first down. <laughs> that was not like the design was, work. No, he, <laughs> he went to hand the ball off, and nobody was home, and then Seister said, give me that thing, and yeah. he runs for a first down. Yeah, he was he said, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> he was going one way, he handed it to him going the other, and he managed. Do you think that's a skill. freshman Q mistake, Ward? Probably. Probably. They're just out of sync. I'm They're just not very – stat whiteboard you're using tonight. Well, I'm doing the best I can here. And so far, I'm pretty much on the money. Yes, you are. Lone setback is Brooks. They give it to Seister, and Seister swarm for a loss of about three. Back to the 31-yard line. On the tackle was Adrian Johnson. Third on the team with 48 tackles. 5'9", 180-pound left defensive tackle. They're not huge up front on the defensive side, but they've got some athletes. Yeah, they're, and they're quick, and, it, and their backers are doing a great job of uh, reading and then attacking. They're not waiting to be blocked. They're attacking the blockers, and that jams those holes up pretty quick. Cooper Rother, cornerback on the left side. They send Brady Seister in motion, and let's see who has that football. Alec, and he's going to be sacked. Sacked by Adrian Johnson. And he's going to lose big yardage inside the 25 back to the 23-yard line where it will be third down and a whole bunch. About 20 to go for a first down. They need to get to the 44, and the line of scrimmage is the 34 or 24. So it is third and 20. Just haven't been able to get Josh established, Josh Seister established. And, I, and again, I... I you know, his strength to me is his speed, so you try to get him to the edge somehow. What they have been trying just isn't working. Alec goes under center. Tough situation here for the Red Dragons and the freshman quarterback. He's going to throw down the left sideline, and it's intercepted by Kesey Wetter at the 45 to the 40. Right sideline, steps out of bounds. Or, uh, no, he's tackled uh, pretty hard right in front of that purchase line bench. Connor Kesey Wetter, I guess I should clarify because there's two Kesey Wetters, his younger brother Carson as well, both spelled with a K, Connor and Carson. Brady Seister on the tackle, but on the interception, Guilfoyle in business again. Just, uh, you know, uh, throw and hope kind of thing there. Elick, just a freshman, just didn't have enough on that pass. Well covered. Guilfoyle was obviously playing deep pass, and we're getting burned, and now there's a... Penalty here. I didn't catch that. I think so it'll still be their what's ball. What's the signal? Yeah. It was, it was after the play, I think. Must have been. Might have been unsportsmanlike. Took offense to that tackle. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard tackle. <laughs> it was a hard one. And he quit running, but, you know, the whistle hadn't blown. So you're taught. Played at a whistle. 6 <laughs> 12 left. Third quarter, Guilfoyle at the PL 41-yard line. They fake the jet, and with the football, Keegan Myrick, and inside the 35, uh, still going, Myrick broke a tackle. Myrick. Outstanding run by Myrick to the 25-yard well, line for a gain of 16 here. yards. Yeah, he's playing quarterback, faked the uh, jet sweep, and then just went All up the middle. The line. And just dragging people, Myrick. breaking tackles the Myrick. whole way. Dragons have had people... Pinned in the backfield, just unable to finish them off. Two in, two out for the Marauders. They spotted at the 26-yard line on the right hash as we look out of our ST Bank broadcast booth. ST Bank, relationship banking, one customer at a time. They operate right to left. The Marauders do from our home press box, second-level location. 
Keegan Myrick again taking the direct snap and inside the 25 down to about the 23 where Isaac Huey made the tackle for the Red Dragons. Spotter in the booth, Chris Graham, appreciate his help back-to-back -back nights. He flies up from Florida just to do this. Pretty impressive. He said he spares no expense. <laughs> That's hardcore, buddy. They're glad to have him, though. He gets points on his credit card, and it well, got he's, him, he's got got him a, a uh, free Big Mac he's already. Got a, yep. He got a pile of them, I'm going to tell you. Second down and seven. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And taking the snap is Garner. Garner dancing around, coming near side, directing traffic with his right hand. Not in trouble, and they're going to sack him. Clayton Patrick has him, and Clayton Patrick throws him out of bounds. And a flag now thrown. Did uh, Purchase Line get overzealous, or did Guilfoyle react to that, that was, sack? You know, it was a hard tackle, but I didn't see any action after the tackle. Good but job by the secondary of Purchase Line. Yeah, it was. Officials conferring. Uh, there may be some language exchange done there. <laughs> I don't know. Four, I four, uh, triple fours on the scoreboard. 444 remaining in this third quarter. 28 nothing. Guilfoyle over the purchase line. Red Dragons. Right They've now, scored in every corner. They're going to wave the flag off. How about that? It's a loss of seven yards as I see it. So, yeah, they back it up uh, to the 31 yard line. Loss of eight, actually. Okay. I'll make that correction. The nice play there by Purchase Line's Purchase defense Lines. came in averaging, uh, allowing 24.6 points per game. 294 yards a game, 127 yards rushing, 167 passing. Guilfoyle's offense averaging 348 per contest. Kesey Wetter rolls to his right, throwing on the run for the end zone, and it is incomplete, intended for Andrew Yanishek on the coverage for the Purchase Line Red Dragons was Chase Brooks and Andrew Beer. So it'll be fourth down for the Marauders. Football at the 31, probably out of field goal range here. Fourth down and 15 to go. Pretty good coverage downfield. Again, you don't want to get anybody behind you. I'm not sure what this one sure player. Uh, Yanishek is doing a little jog around the track. He has to keep running, as I understand that, when you come off the field like that. And that's what he's doing. Boy, that's Empty backfield with a wingman to the right, McCloskey. Kesey-Wetter takes the direct snap, throwing down the seam, and it's in the end zone, and is it caught? No, it's incomplete. Good effort, double coverage by Chase Brooks and Melo Sanchez on Keegan Myrick, and they will turn it over on downs. Good defense. I said the secondary is pretty good for purchase line. And that was a good stand. Now they need to get themselves uh, some kind of offense going here. Move it down the field, try to punch something in just to uh, let Guilfoyle know they're not going away. They're going to start at their own 31-yard line, trailing 28 nothing with 4.30 to play here in the third quarter. S&T Bank broadcast booth location. This is great, isn't it, Ward? Oh. I'm in short sleeves. And <laughs> things are... <laughs> we froze over here a few times. Tonight, not the case. Brady Seister in motion out of the backfield. Cousin Josh takes the direct snap, and uh, not much, maybe a yard or so as he tried bouncing it outside. Dylan McNally on the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. It'll be second down in nine. So frustrating for a runner with his skills not to be able to find anything to, to make to show those skills off. He gets into the secondary. He is really fun to watch, but he has not been able to do that tonight. 1,507 yards rushing coming into tonight's game. Josh Seister at the quarterback position right now with running backs to his left and to his right, and he's going to keep it. He's tackled pretty much in his tracks. Just got the wheels going, but Cameron Maloney stepped into the way and tackled him. You know, Ward, you look at some of the outstanding players in the Heritage Conference, and of course we get to see the sensational Ben Schmidt week in and week out. And Josh Seister also fits the bill of what I'm about to say. Not that Seister and Schmidt don't have a good supporting cast because they do, but those players are so important to their team. Hunter Cameron, United, oh, obviously my. a down yeah. season, but you, look, you have to look with what you're surrounded with too and how much pressure is on them to perform and carry the load. 
And I think both, uh, all three that I mentioned uh, are in that position. Pass out in the flat to Melo Sanchez. That doesn't work. Andrew Janicek on the tackle for the Guilfoyle Marauders and purchase line goes three and out. They're going to have to punt it away as we roll under three minutes to play here in the third quarter. 28-0 Bishop Guilfoyle. Keegan Myrick back to receive the punt from or for the Marauders. They're in their home uniforms, gold pants, purple jerseys, white helmets with the number on one side and BG on the other. Purple stripe on, stripe on those pants. Purple and gold of Guilfoyle, direct snap, or uh, the uh, snap is, punt is blocked, and it's plucked out of the air by J.T. Johnston, and he has a touchdown. Seister had the punt block clean as they brought pressure, and it's 34-0 Guilfoyle. It's going to be into the mercy rule. With a good extra point, you are right. That, uh, it, they just come flying up the middle that time, and Seister didn't have a prayer, but it really a slick pickup on the bounce there. He never broke stride when he picked the ball out of the air off the bounce and uh, ran easily into the end zone. About, what, 20? Yeah, I think they were on. 20 yards? Looks like it was 31 was the yard line, so they blocked it probably around the 20, 21. Wyatt to attempt the extra point. He has an outstanding leg, and the kick is up, and kick is good. His fifth of the night. He's perfect this season, 19 of 19, and we will be in the mercy rule the rest of the way with 2.24 remaining in the third quarter. It's now Guilfoyle 35, purchase line nothing on the Red Dragon U92 Radio Football Network been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. This is Tessa Bailey from Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas in stock with prices to fit every budget. Weaver's Pools and Spas, Philadelphia Street. It approaches the ball, line drive kick and a whistle and a flag offside on Guilfoyle. So they'll back him up to the 35-yard line. He'll have to kick it all over again. We'll be back here next weekend, Homer Center in the championship game against, it looks like, Bishop Guilfoyle. And yeah. Lord, the two are going to meet again back yeah, in yeah, 2000. 13, 2016, 2017. You know, I said the same thing about the Homer's basketball program when they played Kennedy Christian so many times. You know, you, to get there is a credit to you. And the same thing, playing Guilfoy all these times, that's a credit to the program to be able to get to that point. And they've got some offense that can maybe spread this Guilfoy defense out a little bit. It's hard to get to this point. Long kick. And Melo Sanchez, as it rolls laterally toward the sideline, picks it up at the seven. And what are they going to say? His knee was down, evidently, when he picked it up. Oh, wow. Boy, I don't know about that. I don't either. I just thought he leaned over and picked it up. The kick ended up spinning toward the sideline. And... Well, yeah, the he, official's a lot closer than we are, he, I'll say he had, that. Uh, he had no t the choice to make. He had to pick that ball up. His, oh, for sure. There was no guarantee it was going to continue on its way out of bounds. He was watching the defense come down, the uh, kick coverage team. May have put his knee down inadvertently at the time. I don't know. But mercy anyway, roll, mercy clock. They'll roll the clock here from this point forward. Freshman quarterback John Alec back in. Or purchase line. They send Brady Seister in motion and the give up the middle. 
Now I'm assuming that is Josh Seister. Nope, Jace Brooks spoke too soon. Brooks had a couple of runs, you know, in the first Stop half, back-to-back -back runs that got Purchase Line going a little bit. Just Purchase Line couldn't sustain drives. They had a couple of opportunities. JT Johnston, who had the recovery of the block punt for a touchdown, made that tackle. No big plays. That's the thing. They needed a couple of big runs, and they haven't been able to get those tonight. And that's credit to the defense. Alec goes under his center, Dylan Bouch, and throws out a little bubble screen. And with it is Gabe Lamer, and Lamer a few yards up to the, close to the 15-yard line. A.J. Kilmartin on the tackle. Dylan Balch, the center's only a freshman, 5'10", 250, so you would assume that'll be the tandem next year, you know, taking over. Purchase line will lose Josh Seister, but they have a nice nucleus coming back, no question about it, and I think Alec has a chance to be a good quarterback. Yes, he does. Under a minute remaining in the third quarter, 28-0 Guilfoyle. Third down and about five, and the give, and nothing doing there for the purchase line Red Dragons, Josh Seister. Josh uh, hasn't Josh seen many defenses like this. Cameron Maloney, Stop another tackle. Cameron, Cameron Maloney is a force inside. This was a, a concern that I had coming in. You rely on a player like that, and if you can't get him freed, your offense has really become stagnant, and that's pretty much what's happening here. You're, you're out of your comfort zone is what I'm getting at, Mark. You, you know, you're not a passing team, and you have to. Brady Seister stands at his own goal line and takes the direct snap. They don't bring pressure this time. End over end kick hits at the 41 of the Red Dragons, and it's going to roll dead, touch dead at the 45. We'll step out quickly with 10 seconds left in the third. 35 nothing. Guilfoyle back after this. Scott Hillsbury here with Colonial Toyota. I'm excited that our doors are finally open, and we're happy for all of our other local businesses too. We understand that buying a car right now may not be top priority for some, but for those looking for reliable transportation, we're here for you. With new Toyotas at 0% for 60 months and a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles, there's no better time to buy. So stop in at Colonial Toyota or visit us online at shopcolonialtoyota.com where the experience can't be beat. And with the Mercy clock, they set the ball and start the clock, and the third quarter has just expired. And if you need a new watch, Luxembourg Jewelers is a good place. <laughs> Thank you, Luxembourg Jewelers. Yes, it's that time of year. Holiday shopping time in Luxembourg's at the Indiana Mall in downtown Indiana. Certainly a good place to start. Coming back with fourth quarter action with Guilfoyle leading 35 to nothing right after this on the Red Dragon U92 Radio Football Network. Goes Keegan Myrick for about 25 yards on the tackle. Mello Sanchez, who didn't give up on the play. I like that. They put it down at the 21, so a gain of 24 yards for Keegan Myrick. Gain of 24 yards, good for a marauder. First down. Purchase line, 21 yard line. New player in here is a receiver to the right, and Myrick handoff, and about three yards. Drew Abraham, the ball carry. Drew Abraham with the carry. A lot of new players in there for Gail Foyles. They mix some starters with some uh, subs. Actually, they put them down at the 20, so a gain of just a yard. Quarterback remains Connor Kesewetter into the huddle. Comes Brandon Wasser, a 6'2", 190-pound senior. Andrew Janicek out of the game. Second down and nine from the 20-yard line. Receiver near side is Michael Lamb. 
Kiesewetter lines up on the far side of the field. Keegan Myrick on the carry as uh, the he was at the quarterback here. position. Gets to the 16-yard line. Thomas Batten, big nose guard. He'll be back next year, a junior 6'2", 290. Ball at the 16, third down. About six to go, maybe five to go, actually. Football at the 16. Playing for pride now, Mark. Yep. You, know, you just don't want to give up another score. You know, your chances of winning are gone, but you want to stay at least competitive. Toss right from Kesey Wetter to Keegan Myrick. That's Myrick inside the 15 down to about the 13. Looked like Purchase Line stripped that ball away at the last minute, and Ellick does have it, but uh, they're going to say he was down. Good effort. Ellick is a good football player. I'm impressed with him. He's a freshman, and he's giving you some pretty good looks out here. They spot it down at the 14-yard line. Ball on the right hash as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. That's S&T Bank. It'll be fourth down and three. Our video producer tonight is Andy Hart. He's uh, three. In booth, the booth next to us through the glass, he and Zachary Vogt, who's on the, or Caitlin's on the camera, and the flag on the play is racing into the end zone is Carson Kesey-Wetter, but I think it's coming back. Yeah, flag was thrown in the back. That's generally a hold. Carson Kesey-Wetter, a sophomore 175-pound, uh, six-foot 175-pound I mean, sophomore is what I'm trying to say, has rushed it 10 times coming into tonight's action, 92 yards, not a bad average, 9.2, and a couple <laughs> of touchdowns, and he had one wiped off there with the hold. Big hole opened up, and, of course, the hold might have had something to do with that. So, so now they're, they're going to go goal. for a field goal. The ball back to the -yard line, it was wide left on his first attempt, but it had enough leg, and it was wide over 40. Out of the hold of Adam Chadbourne. 36 yard effort from right to left and the kick is up and the kick is no good, it's wide left. That's two field goals he's missed wide left. We'll step out, Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night continues with the score 35-0 Guilfoyle on the U92 Red Dragon Football Network. Nestled in the heart of Indiana County, the Indiana County Technology Center serves over 400 students from eight sending schools across the county. The evolution of our programs follow industry trends, fulfilling unique workforce needs right here in our own backyard. The ICTC is empowering tomorrow's workforce with an engaging, real-life approach to career and technical education. We offer 13 high-demand program areas and a variety of career pathways. Employable, certified, and driven. That is what an ICTC graduate looks like. I thought they would do a little more of that, try to get him on those wide pitches, let him use his speed, break a tackle. That's what happened there. 35-0 Guilfoyle, 8-33 moving clock. We are in the mercy rule. Purchase line sends a receiver near side toward us, Gabe Lamer. Ball in the right hash. They operate right to left behind the formation. They run an inside reverse from Brady Seister to Mello Sanchez, and Mello has a first down up near the 35-yard line where he's pushed back by Brandon Wasser on the tackle, but a nice-looking play. A little bit of misdirection and an inside reverse from Purchase Line. Melo Sanchez, finding him in on, on my chart here. Only 17 rushes, 112 yards. I think he'll be a more focal point of the offense next year. Yeah, they just, we were surprised he wasn't this year, but uh, Seister was just such a feature back that uh, really wasn't a lot of footballs for him. Handoff up the middle. And with the football, I think that's Chase Brooks. Let's see. It is. On the tackle, Caleb Stevens for the Marauders. Stevens, a senior, 5'11", 220. Not too shabby, Ward, when your second unit consists of a bunch of seniors. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. You can see the depth factor down here. Second down, seven. Alec. The quarterback 
And he hands it off, and there's some confusion in the backfield again. We've seen that, and Seister, Josh Seister, didn't have a chance as he loses yardage back to the 35-yard line. Caleb Stevens on the stop as we approach the seven-minute mark of this football game. 35 to nothing. Guilfoyle has scored in every quarter except this one. And they may not. Doing, they are doing a lot of subbing to their credit. Purchase line hung in there. It was 7-0 after the first quarter. And a blocked punt for a touchdown didn't help in the third. Alec throws out in the flat. The pass taken, but a short gain of just a couple. Pass completed to Dylan Overman, a senior. Stopped by Vincent Caferi. Or actually, it's pronounced Shafari. Shafari, my my bad. I'll get it. I talked to Rich DeLeo to get pronunciations uh, right. Six minutes ago, uh, here doesn't look like Shafari, but that's uh, it's C I O F F A R I, but it is Shafari. It's an Irish name. Yeah, that's what you always say. <laughs> Fourth down and eight from the 37 yard line. Purchase line will go for it. Nothing to lose in this situation. And Alec short drop throws caught and a first down on the far side of the field. Hauling in that football for the Purchase Line Red Dragons. It was Andrew Beer, Michael Lamb on the tackle. Good execution from the young freshman yeah, good quarterback. Saw, good, good hard pass right there. Defender couldn't get to it. Good job. Ball First at the 47-yard line. We are under six minutes to play in this game. Most Homer Center games we do, we're just in the middle of the second quarter at this <laughs> time with the scoring that goes on. In motion behind the formation, Josh Slayster, but they hand it up the gut. And Chase Brooks has it, and Chase Brooks is stopped. Caleb Stevens again doing a good job. That's three tackles on this possession for Purchase Line. So their season's going to come to a close at four and five, but I think a lot of optimism for the future and the fact that they were able to get in nine games, make another run in the playoffs, certainly a lot to be proud of with wins over West Shimokin and Penn's Manor. Avenging earlier losses to those same two clubs as the Red Dragons started 0-3 and, and then they do what Purchase Line does. They bounce back and uh, had a nice season. Melo Sanchez near side of the field forced out of bounds after a gain of about six. And there's some jawing going on down on the sideline. Melo turns around and says, hey, you know, let's just play. P.J. Pollock on the tackle. Second quarter score from South Bend. Notre Dame, Dame beating Clemson 23 to 10 in the second quarter. We're down to four and a half minutes remaining in this football game. Action on U92.5 FM. Thank you, Danielle Porsarchek, for your great work. Alec back to pass. Alec going to air it out, throws deep, and uh, it's almost intercepted by Guilfoyle's Michael Lamb, who was in better position. Intended uh, receiver was Andrew Beer. So it'll be fourth down again, this time about four to go for the Red Dragons at the Marauder 47-yard line. Tried to catch Guilfoyle looking for the run there with just uh, four yards to go. So it ran a deep pattern. Uh, tough to complete. Freshman, again, making a good, nice pass, so he had it out there, but just a little too far. Gabe Lamer, receiver in front of the Guilfoyle sideline. They have a wingman to the left, single setback. And Alec back to pass, throws a little bit low, and it's incomplete. I don't think it was going to work for a first down anyway, uh, as uh, the intended receiver Beer would have been tackled, uh, or actually probably would have downed himself if he's able to haul it in the pass. Just got away from Alec a little bit, was a little bit low, and Guilfoyle will take over on downs. We'll step out. 35 nothing Marauders, 333 remaining in the football game on an IRMC playoff sports night on the U92 Radio Football Network. Grown-ups, your car is now your office. Stage, nursery, shh, sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal, and it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person, like this. Your local Erie agent is Hutton Blues Insurance. 724-397-ERIE. Or visit HuttonBlues.com. Erie Insurance. Brought down by Andrew Beer, flag on the play. Dylan Conrad on Walking the carry the as we come back to Marauders. action. And a good carry from the 47 to the purchase line, 40, uh, 
yard line or maybe the 39, but it's going to come back. The new quarterback is the younger Kesey Wetter, Carson, a sophomore, six foot 175. But uh, going to be negated, W.A. Yeah, but must have been a hold downfield. But they just marked Yeah, way downfield from the point of the foul, so it ends up still being a net gain of three yards for Conrad. That's another familiar Guilfoyle name, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. We were over here as much as we were. Yeah. We start to remember these names. McCloskey, Chadbourne, and the give to Conrad again. Conrad, you can tell. Conrad, the ball carrier. Pretty good uh, ball carrier. He's a senior, though, so he'll be graduating. Just no room I, on the, uh, in the t starting lineup for these guys. They're good talent. Isaac Huey on the stop. Just going to scan real quickly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I see about seventeen seniors on the roster. Pretty healthy number. Second down and five, and Carson Kesey Wetter is going to keep it, but doesn't Kesey get Wetter much. Back to the line of scrimmage to the purchase line, 48-yard line. I don't think he got anything. Nope. So it'll be third down and five. We're down to two minutes to play in the game. Isaac Huey again making that tackle. Subs coming for the Marauders uh, into the game. Jacob Seifert, as I was going through pronunciations, Rich DeLeo said Seifert may not play tonight, depending on the game, and the youngster did there get in. There he is. Yep. Near side. Dylan Conrad is a receiver. Carson Kesey-Wetter, the sophomore quarterback, has a fullback behind him, or a running back behind him. And he fakes it and keeps it and has a first down to the purchase line, 42-yard line. Chase Brooks drags him down. A junior, he'll be back next year for Matt Felicic's ball club. 120 and counting here at Mansion Park in Altoona. 35-0 Bishop Guilfoyle. They're going to advance and play a somewhat familiar opponent. I guess <laughs> some of these players that were freshmen would remember the 2017 game that ended BG's 59-game winning streak. They were, what, three-time state champions or four yeah, times? Yeah, three times, I think. There's a fumble in the backfield and hopping on it, Dylan Conrad, as it was a toss from Connor Kiesewetter, not handled by Conrad. So that'll back them up to the 48-yard line. Isaac Huey made the tackle. We are under a minute to play, 45 seconds. Really, they just have to run one more play, and that will be it. 40 seconds are put on the play clock between plays. So this should do it. They may even take a knee here. Stay with us for our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. That's what they do. They line up in victory formation. And Carson Kiesewetter takes a knee. And that is the final play of the football game. Gilfoyle led 21 to nothing at the half. Added two scores in the third quarter, including a touchdown off of a blocked punt. Put the game into the mercy roll. And we have a final score as the final three seconds tick off of the clock. Guilfoyle will be here at Mansion Park next weekend. They'll be joined by the Homer Center Wildcats for the single A championship game of District 6. We'll recap this when we come back on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. You've been listening to Red Dragon Football on the Purchase Line U92 Radio Football Network. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, and I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who voted for my re-election. I'm honored that you placed your trust in me, and with that trust, I guarantee I will continue to work tirelessly on your behalf to address challenges and move our region and our Commonwealth forward. I have every confidence that our future is bright. And speaking of our future, I salute all of our young student athletes for competing in the district and state playoffs.
This is the Tire Man, James Cypress from Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center at Luther Ford with bad news and some good news. The bad news is winter is coming. The good news, if you need tires, we can help. Buy three tires and you'll get the fourth one free. Plus, we offer at least eight of the most popular tire brands in the country. The Tire Man will also throw in free lifetime tire rotation and a free alignment check. We will match or beat any competitor's price. But hurry, offer ends November 30th at Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center at Luther Ford. Route 119, Homer City. Christy Sweet was diagnosed with breast cancer at just 32 years old. Fortunately, IRMC Cancer Center, in partnership with UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, is just 20 minutes from her home. Today, after a chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and radiation therapy, Christy is cancer-free. Learn more about Christy's story and the world-renowned cancer care right here in Indiana at upmchillman.com forward slash IRMC. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi. I want to sincerely thank the people of the 62nd Legislative District for your overwhelming re-election support. I am truly honored to serve as your voice in Harrisburg and look forward to continuing the hard work ahead. Serious challenges face our communities and we will address them through effective leadership, communication, compassion and understanding. My staff and I are dedicated to serving you and working in partnership with our local, state and federal leaders to make all of our lives better. I truly appreciate your support. And let's go vocal teams. involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's 81 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. This is Tessa Bailey from Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're proud to be part of tonight's internet broadcast. We've had another great year of Weaver's Pools and Spas, and we're now booking our projects for next year. So call us if you're ready to put in that pool you've always wanted. And don't forget, spa season is right around the corner. We have a great selection of spas and stock with prices to fit every budget. Weaver's Pools and Spas, Philadelphia Street. Mark Burdick back with you on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show on our video stream in our broadcast booth and on U92.5. Thank you to Danielle Pisarczyk, our radio producer tonight for her outstanding work. Andy Hart on the video stream along with Zachary and Caitlin helping us out, our IUP students all season long doing such an outstanding job. We'll get to the stats on our second uh, break. Ward Hilliard's adding them up. Fourth shutout of the season for the Guilfoyle Marauders as they are going to head back to the District 6 championship game and defend last year's title. They advanced to the state championship game, losing to Farrell 10-7 in overtime last year. So they're uh, trying to get another District 6 championship, which would be their seventh. Homer Center Wildcats will be their opponent. The Wildcats will be looking for their fifth. We think the game will be next Friday, but uh, we're still waiting for official word. As for this game... Guilfoyle scored first at the 225 mark. Faced with the third down and 15, Connor Kiesewetter hit Hayden Garner on a 40 yard touchdown pass. And Devin Wyan added the extra point to make it 7 to nothing. And we headed to the second quarter. Purchase line actually had a little bit of a drive going, but uh, a bad exchange. And there were a few of them tonight for the Red, Red Dragons, kind of bogged things down. And Bill uh, Guilfoyle took over at their own 27-yard line on a second down and five. Hayden Garner, who uh, they basically lined up three players at quarterback a lot tonight. Uh, Carson Kesey-Wetter, the starter, but Garner was used at quarterback. Keegan Myrick and Garner this time on a read option took it 68 yards for a touchdown. Two-play 73-yard drive that took just 47 seconds. Devin Wyant's extra point made it 14 to nothing at the 749 mark. Red Dragons went three and out. Halfway through the second quarter, the Marauders went back to work after a penalty as they drove um, 
the length of the field, they were faced with a first and goal from the Red Dragon 15-yard line. And Connor Kesewetter was forced out of the pocket, pressure up the middle, but came around the left end, found enough green turf to race into the end zone just inside the left pylon to make it 21 to nothing with just 18 seconds left in the half. And Devin Wyant's extra point made it 21 to nothing, and that's where we were at the break. Scoring two touchdowns in the third quarter, really the knockout blow for the Marauders came on the opening possession. The uh, Red Dragons tried an onside kick. We're not sure if it hit one of their own players, but it had a spin to it, and it ended up being a negative three. It rolled back to the 37-yard line. Keegan Myrick then capped off a short drive on a three-yard touchdown run at the 9:01 mark to make it 28 to nothing after Devin Wyant's fourth extra point. He has not missed this season. Purchase line on a third down and 20 on their first possession of the second half. John Ellick was intercepted, uh, and Connor uh, Kiesewetter uh, had the football, and Guilfoyle started at the purchase line 41-yard line, but they did stall. Purchase line got it back at their own 31. They went three and out, and then the play that put the game into the mercy rule, a block punt recovered by J.T. Johnston, who raced 21 yards for a touchdown. Wyant's extra point made it 35 to nothing at the 224 mark of the third quarter. We had a running clock the rest of the way. No scoring in the fourth quarter as it ends up 35 to nothing with Guilfoyle advancing to the championship game, eliminating Purchase Line. Their season ends with a record of 4-5, and five, but after an 0-3 start, a lot of, I think, promise for the future, and Josh Seister does graduate. Sensational year, about 1,600 yards rushing for him. So we'll talk about the stats that shaped up this game when we come back for a final time to Purchase Line and some final comments from our broadcast booth when we continue on the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Again, the final Bishop Guilfoyle 35, Purchase Line nothing on the U92 Radio Red Dragon Football Network. For more than 100 years, the Indiana Regional Medical Center has been your number one health option, always striving to bring you the latest, most innovative medical care, like urgent care, now available in Indiana at MedExpress at 2128 Oakland Avenue. IRMC and MedExpress have formed an exciting new partnership for urgent care services. So when you have a cold or the flu, you've injured yourself and need diagnostic services for a sprain or fracture, your lab work, or have some non-emergency health issue, visit MedExpress, 2128 Oakland Avenue in Indiana. If only she parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. If only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Erie Insurance. Seeing our kids suit up for football, cheerleading, or band are once-in-a-lifetime moments our parents just don't want to miss. Current conditions have changed the way we enjoy athletic events. We appreciate every opportunity to watch our kids perform, even if that looks a little different this year. As a community bank, we're happy to partner with Brenda Broadcasting's coverage of Heritage Conference football games. We are proud parents and supporters of our local schools. Congratulations and good luck to all students, staff, and everyone involved. Scott Hillsbury here with Colonial Toyota. I'm excited that our doors are finally open, and we're happy for all of our other local businesses, too. We understand that buying a car right now may not be top priority for some, but for those looking for reliable transportation, we're here for you. With new Toyotas at 0% for 60 months and a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles, there's no better time to buy. So stop in at Colonial Toyota or visit us online at shopcolonialtoyota.com, where the experience can't be beat.
Commonwealth Bank postgame show, 35 to nothing. Guilfoyle with the victory to improve to 6-2. and two. And the purchase line Red Dragons finish their season under Matt Felisic with a record of 4-5. and five. But when you start 0-3, that's not too bad, is it? No, it, it takes a lot just to get here. And they uh, did well to, just to make it up here. I'm sure they wanted to play better, but that's a good team they played against. <laughs> They got their lunch handed to them pretty much. All right, Ward, as uh, we recap this 35 to nothing Bishop Guilfoyle victory, give us the numbers that shape things up. I know they're lopsided in Bishop Guilfoyle's favor. Yeah, four purchase line. Uh, Brady Seister had one carry for three yards. Josh Seister, 17 for 45. John Ellick, three for minus 15. J.C. Brooks, 10 for 31. And Melo Sanchez had two carries for 12 yards. They had 33 rushes, 76 yards through the air, 4 of 8 for 23 yards, and an interception for Ellick, 2 of 5 for 30 yards for Seister, 6 of 13 for 53 yards through the air, 76 on the ground, 129 total yards on 39 plays. For Bishop Guilfoyle, Abraham had one carry, one yard, Conrad, two for five. Gardner, four for 72 and a touchdown. Of course, that big 68-yard run or 64-yard run was in there. Myrick had 20 carries, 147 yards, and two touchdowns. Kesey Wetter, six carries, or one carry, I'm sorry, 15 and a touchdown. McCloskey had three for 13. Total of 17 rushes, 180 yards. I'm sorry, yeah, three touchdowns through the air. They were two of six with an interception for just 52. So they had a total of 200, and, uh, and I'm, that's incorrect. They had 31 rushes for 251 yards, I'm go. sorry. And three of nine with an interception through the air for 71. 300. 40 plays, 322 total yards. My bad, Darren, reading well, the first a, half it's numbers. It's a tough job. That's all right. Uh, I know you. we like when Jerry Ross size with <laughs> Do us. We ever? So Purchase Line closes out the season. We congratulate them. We congratulate their outstanding senior running back, Josh Seister. Yes. Uh, tough night tonight, tough sledding. There, he earned every yard, didn't he, tonight? against this talented Bishop Guilfoyle defense, but what a player he has been in his career. Uh, it was exciting to watch the Homer Center game. He was practically unstoppable. He's had a great year. I'm glad to see it. Uh, I know the frustration he's going through. You know, great runners like to be able to make big plays. He just couldn't do that. Credit the Bishop Guilfoyle defense. Just too tough for him tonight. We'll lose a couple of other starters on offense, Isaac Huey and Gabe Lamer, also Dylan Overman, uh, got some playing time uh, on the two deep. Uh, wasn't a starter necessarily, but overall they're going to return a lot of people, seven players on offense, and defensively they started only three seniors, so eight returning there. I think a nice nucleus of players for Matt Felicic to build off of in uh, what we hope will be a full 2021 season. Yeah, we sure do, but and you're right, Mark. That's the nature of high school football. You know, you have you hate to see kids leave, but you got some other ones coming up, and uh, it just uh, it's just a continuous cycle. It's a great, great game. All right, we'll look forward to next weekend the yep. championship game between Homer Center and Purchase Line on the field right behind us. What do you expect? Well, I, I think Homer has a little more offensive. Uh, the flexibility with Ben Schmidt. Obviously, he could throw and he can run, so that's going to give Gilfo a few more concerns. I think that was the problem for Purchase Line. They're run oriented, and if you stop that, you force them into something they're not comfortable doing. That's what happened. Homer is comfortable doing that, and much of what you saw Gilfoyle doing, the Wildcats do. They like to run Ben, and uh, you saw dude, Myrick was running a lot from shotgun, just like Ben does. So. I think we're going to have a shootout next week. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll find out if it's Friday or Saturday. We think it'll be Friday. We'll be on the air at 6.15. So we'd like to thank, on the radio side, Danielle Pisarczyk, our producer back in Indiana, video producer Andy Hart, Zachary Vogt, and Caitlin Dutz right here. Our video folks, our entire team making it possible on the radio and on the video stream on Renda Digital TV. We hope you enjoyed our presentation tonight. For Ward Hilliard, Mark Burdick reminding you that the final score is Bishop Guilfoyle advances and they will defend last year's District 6 championship.
They will host or play Homer Center here at Mansion Park in Altoona next weekend. The final score tonight, Bishop Guilfoyle 35 and the purchase line Red Dragons nothing from Mansion Park in Altoona. Good night, everybody.